Hello, my name is Matthew Kay. I'm Joshua Hanlon. And we're here at Brickworld Chicago 2015 to give you a little bit of a tour of the Expo Hall. Now, we're not going to be able to cover everything in this Expo Hall. We will try and give you an idea of just uh, generally what everything is like. So we'll kind of be walking by creations, giving a little bit of comment, a little bit of critique, and uh, maybe just kind of trying to give you a little bit of a feel uh, for what this Expo Hall and Brickworld is like. So uh, mm-hmm. I guess we'll get started then, yeah? Yep. We'll start right down here with some of these really cool uh, architecture buildings. And so these are by... Uh, uh, Rocco Boutelier, and I'm probably not pronouncing that name correctly, but in any case, uh, very, very nice buildings. This is a model of the World Trade Center site, and uh, this is the World Trade Center site uh, before September 11th, uh, 2011. And he brings 2001. All, 2001. 2001. So he brings all sorts of, of really amazing uh, builds here. You can see all these laid out on the table. Uh, you know, Chrysler Building, uh, GE Building, whatever, Empire State Building, all these famous landmarks he brings here. Sure. Several years he's brought these. And we can take a moment to appreciate that the, this uh, Grand Central Terminal and MetLife Building. Uh, the MetLife Building on the back is constructed using a wonderful technique. It's that uh, one by two, uh, I believe by two, uh, grill like cheese slope and so he's been able to kind of facet them at an angle and achieve like uh, it's almost like a like a window look you know and uh, I, I first saw this technique used on a train engine uh, a while back and I was really happy to see that this building was using a similar technique sort of uh, snotting in those uh, grilled cheese plates anyway very mm-hmm. cool so some great builds there and then we'll Bring it on down this way to, uh, I believe, the start of some some gamer lug stuff here. So, we'll see this. Uh, we got some Imperial City Third Era. We got all sorts of really interesting gaming builds. Uh, Planets of Destiny. Uh, you see a lot by uh, Jared Rosenblatt has some really cool builds here. You'll see some Nick Jensen. All sorts of some great builders around here. Metroid. Uh, you got Venator, massive uh, Star Wars spaceship here. These are really some of the most incredible builds uh, in the whole convention hall. These are just uh, the, the level of execution and all that stuff, just uh, really, really amazing. These large, large spaceships with incredible detailing and, uh, I don't know, just uh, mm-hmm. wild. And this here is uh, Metroid Prime, which is a really awesome build done by Jared Rosenblatt. I really like this one. I believe this is new this year, so... Uh, Artifact Temple Showdown is the name of this build. He did he did a really great job with that. Uh, and then you can see down here further. Uh, imagine Rigney's build that was there last year. Really awesome, cool gaming build there as well. Uh, moving down this direction, we've got uh, some Toro Lug builds here. And then uh, we just take a moment to appreciate the. We'll, we'll be covering this in other videos. You'll be sure to check out in, uh, other you know parts of the, our coverage from this year's event. But this is a bar built out of Duplo bricks. So, yes, those are real uh, Duplo bricks in green, and um, that's a bar, and those stools that are, people are sitting on are made out of Lego. So, uh, just really, really crazy. And uh, real quick, uh, th- right next to that bar, there's a, um, it's kind of like a reinterpretation of that Nathan Sawaya statue. I don't know the name of the statue sculpture, but this is like the horse version of said sculpture. So it's a horse uh, with horses spilling out, and uh, just, uh, I'm not sure if there's some kind of subtle <laughs> things at play here, but either way, very nice. Say nay, ya. Very nice, very nice. And then right to the left of that, there's a Tesla logo. This was constructed by Adrian Drake. And uh, speaking with Adrian earlier, he was able to tell us that uh, it's constructed uh, in the fashion of having a Technic frame running down the center, just uh, able to hold up that whole uh, T uh, in the Tesla logo. So really, really a slick design, and it really is a beautiful logo now that I look at that build. And then right next to that, we have a Tesla charging station, and this is a build by Robert Turner. So some really nice snot work to be able to achieve that Tesla uh, sign uh, logo. I guess that would be more of the Tesla name itself, just written out there. Very, very slick build. And here down at the bottom, we have some little maquettes. These are like little kind of tests uh, to show you how the inner workings of this were constructed. So we can see all of this really, really intricate snot work here. And then you can kind of take that and correlate it to what you see uh, you know, up here. So that's what's going on inside of there. There. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. And then moving on down here, we have some wonderful t- uh, ships. These are uh, done by Julie Van Der Mulen, and uh, really, really, really amazing, intricate builds. Some lovely, lovely ships. 
Yeah, some really great stuff here. And this, these are a lot. You see some historical stuff. This is some World War II era builds. Uh, some destroyer type ships. R really awesome stuff here. Uh, the builder did a really great job with these. So much detail on these ships. You know, capturing all the little guns, the minifigs on there. Uh, it's it's a well done Lego ship. It's always one of my favorite builds that you mention. And there's some really great ones here. And then uh, moving on down, you got some some more uh, great Toro lug builds here. This is a uh, Rick and Morty. So uh, a scene from one of those episodes, you might recognize that if you're a fan of the show. Really cool sand green elements at play there. And then moving on down, we have some uh, other really uh, interesting builds. This is uh, Doctor Who, the God Complex. And uh, so just uh, who knows what's this going on here. Jared Rosenblatt again, so some really cool builds. From really, there. really cool builds. Really amazing. And then, uh, I don't know if you had a childhood, uh, fellow YouTube viewer, uh, but um, I, Matthew, that is my name, I did have a childhood, and I read a lot of Calvin and Hobbes in that childhood. And it's just a wonderful comic strip and uh, kind of explores the, the daily lives of Calvin and uh, Hobbes. And this is a wonderful Lego recreation by Simon Liu and Evan Bordessa. And uh, it just tickles me pink to see this uh, rendered out, the, the ex emotions that they're both showing and the log and just uh, an amazing build on so many levels. Mm -hmm. And then some, some cool builds by uh, Simon Liu and Robert Turner down here. The, the Lest We Forget build, is, I, I really like that one by Simon. Uh, coming down here, Robert has some cool builds. He's got his, uh, this is his crystalline element fractal trees. So uh, just really interesting kind of artistic. Basically just a Travis brick with a bunch of one-by-ones just kind of stuck on the side. And it's amazing how effective and beautiful that is. Mm -hmm. And the next build over is actually the uh, micro travel edition is what Robert calls it of the Villa Monzi, which you might have seen a, a video on the channel in the past where we interviewed Robert about the, the full-size one. So he did a really cool kind of micro version of it there. Then moving on down here, you've got a, a farmstead, fortress, uh, all sorts of cool builds. What's this down here? So this is Explorers of the Desert, and uh, what really strikes me is this kind of technique that's being uh, done here, that using the tiles, kind of projecting outwards, and it's able to kind of, it looks just um, like some kind of crazy stonework, you know? And then this is a really nice exploitation of the 2 to 5 ratio, so two Lego uh Five uh, Lego plates sideways is equivalent to two Lego studs, uh, you know, horizontal. And so you can see that that lines up perfectly. Beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, and that's kind of a good example of, you know, maybe a smaller build that has some, some really cool uh, techniques used in it, though, even if even it's not a real big build. And then look at some stuff real quick on the, the end cap of the Toro Lug display here. Some Johnny Thunder builds, which are really neat. Uh, this is the the Teddy Bear Alliance down here in some like mech type builds, and then uh, Operation Olive Branch with some some really cool olive green uh, builds here from Simon Liu. All sorts of those builds are really really nicely detailed. Coming back this way, uh, we've got assortment of really great builds around here. I don't know, are these done by a specific lug or anything? I'm not, I don't so think it so. It appears that these are some builds done by the uh, Guido family. And so here we can see a build by Joseph Guido. This is the Minion Candy Shop. And then right here we have a build by Maria Guido. And uh, moving on down, Antonio Guido with some really, really wonderful Technic Supercars. And uh, these are just uh, amazing, amazing builds. Mm -hmm. Such a, a level of detail and just a crispness of execution if that's uh, a term. And here we can see the stick in between the two uh, Technic supercars. The Stig minifigures, very nice, very nice. Subtle nod to Top Gear, the once great BBC <laughs> motor show. Sadly no longer with us at the moment. But yeah, those, those cars are amazing. Uh, really, really incredible builds. And then keep on coming down here, you've got, uh, see this is like a large, the Great White, this is by Matthew Holt, so he's got kind of some, some painted wood areas there. An interesting assortment of um, some sets. Like and Arctic some... type sets, a lot of, a lot. Of, these are like the old Arctic sets, right? Yeah, yeah I think well, so. What's really most notable is the fact that the, this wood structure used to support the train tracks and this wood structure in the background used to support these sets, and then the wood base that the whole thing is on. Mm -hmm. Yes, in addition to uh, the interesting usage of 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 uh, some different parts here. There's some interesting different little things he's done. But yeah, the, here we the wood a, is something you see uh, throughout Brickworld. You'll see that every once in a while. You, there's like bases and things that people... Some exceptional usage of said wood. <laughs> and moving on down here, we have the right brick. Uh, this is a wonderful... Uh, 
just a really, really wonderful. It looks like a custom knit kind of blanket. Mm-hmm. And the right brick is the custom engraving business of, I want to say, uh, is it Jeffrey V? I I believe so. If, they, if that's how his name is pronounced, apologies if we messed that up, but I believe that's who it is. So uh, I think, Matt, you got it right that time. And then... Coming down here, uh, you've got some some really cool little builds. This is actually back here. The Lego Girl Memorial Gardens uh, is actually kind of a memorial to uh, Heather, uh, who is a Lego builder that's now passed away. So uh, some some really really cool little memorial type build there. You got a little bowling alley here. It's an interesting build, like the, the little bowling tracks and all of that. And then keep coming down here. Uh, here's some, some what appears to be some normal RC cars, unless is I guess this is somewhat like Technic uh, builds. So get some Lego Technic RC cars. Uh, these look like they would be winning a race, you know. Very mm-hmm. very uh, built for speed, not much else. Very minimalistic racers. And then coming on down here, we have some lovely bionicle. Yeah, this is you don't see a lot of bionicle at Brick World. There's a pretty small showing each year, but you do see a, li- a little bit here, so you can see a few different bionicle type creatures uh, on this layout. So uh, some of this I know is the Chicago area Lego users group, so uh, you might so- notice some of these builds from them. And then we have a lovely door figure here at the center of this uh, space layout, so I appreciate those kind of things. <laughs> she's, she's exploring the vastness of space with the, the rest of the guys yeah, here. It's always nice to randomly insert uh, a minifigure, or maybe it's not random, I'm just kind of assuming it's random, but uh, either way, very nice, very nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, down here we've got, uh, this is like a, a Lego skate park, I think, up here, yeah, you've got skateboards in there, you've got a skateboard on the back there with the word Lego on it. It's actually, uh, this is a model of, uh, Rob Dyrdek's Fantasy Factory, uh, Rob Dyrdek being the, the famous pro skateboarder, and this is, uh, the Fantasy Factory, uh, I believe it's a VH1 show or something like that. Uh, and uh, he just does kind of crazy stunts if you're not familiar with the show and there's his famous three wheel car there to the left I've watched a couple episodes myself but uh, uh, very interesting we see, uh, is that a Chanel West Coast uh, minifigure right there on the corner that's uh, his uh, female like uh, assistant or what have you and uh, that guy with the black tron, that might be Big Black so uh, I guess maybe I've watched more than one or two episodes. <laughs> maybe you seem fairly familiar with yes, it. <laughs> yeah, very nice show. Very nice show. Very nice build. And then the skateboard says Lego, of course. That's mm-hmm. pretty. Cool. Yeah, that's really awesome. The way they made the Lego sign. Got some kind of micro cities a little bit down in this direction. So uh, pretty cool builds there. Uh, here's some smaller vignettes by Matthew O. The uh, builder does does some really great work. Uh, some some interesting little in your castle space micro builds down here a Daniel Church this is some more like a water uh, type builds uh, some futuristic sailing ships things of that nature so cool stuff there and Matthew seems to have discovered something down here what's this this is a robotic tic tac toe player so I guess it's a robot that will play you in tic tac toe. That is kind of crazy. I I don't know. I'm probably not going to actually try and do this right now. I, I don't even really want to mess with this too much because the builder is in here. But in any case, this is pretty amazing, and we'll definitely have to take a look into this uh, a little bit later on. This is the first I've seen of this. This is how big Brick World is, that you can be in an expo hall for uh, how many days, a day or two now, and uh, not run across something this awesome because you've been too busy being distracted with other stuff. Anyway, uh Pretty cool. Let's move on, shall we? <laughs> yes, so keep moving down here, but that is a cool robotic tic-tac-toe game there. So uh, here's some Nicky Fitzgerald, the builder of some of these. These are actually some of the, the boat race builds that happen every year at Brick World. They take the hotel pool and put boats in it and actually have old actual races with some Lego boats. So that's really cool. And we move on down here. You'll see some, some similar Technic-type stuff to, to that that I was just talking about with the boat races. Some larger cars, things of that nature. Then Ben Merrill has some some interesting builds here. Uh, the the empty tomb, place of the skull, some some biblical builds he's got here, nativity scene, some really cool builds there. And then we'll actually come back here and hit this back table here. We, we want to make sure we don't miss this. So uh, starting off with the Caribbean fort and the HMS Hobalar, I believe if I pronounced that correctly. A uh, little pirates type classic build here, imperial troops, things like that. So, uh, interesting little layout. 
keep on coming down here. You got the Sky Runner by Henry Cunningham. Kind of a floating ship. It's a long spaceship. Some other space type, almost steampunk type builds you run into here. All sorts of interesting little builds. Here's almost like a uh, not friends, but one of the girls' lines there, uh, mech type thing. So all sorts of cool stuff there. Uh, here's a military kind of town attack. It seems like the the police are defending against the the military in this scenario. So you can see some some really cool military buildings, some good combining of some modular buildings as well. The police motorcycles, and then. Keep coming down. I like this Chili's here on the right. It's really neat. Uh, that Chili's building, they did a great job with that. And that is actually, uh, it looks like a design by uh, Accurate Brick Innovations. That's uh, Eric Bodis out of Charlotte, North Carolina. I, I want to say, uh, just because I've seen some of Eric's work in, uh, you know, events in my local area in North Carolina, but uh, in any case, uh, very nice Chili's. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, some more cool modular building combinations there and some more military vehicles. And then finishing out this back table with some massive uh, base plates of Imperial troops. So this is almost like a Revolutionary War, British versus Americans type of thing. Uh, really, really cool display of minifigs. It might be cooler it's like if they... like a lot of minifigs and they're on a base plate <laughs> standing in a straight line. That's pretty cool. Hopefully in the future the builder plans to use those in a, in a mock more and uh, have, make some type of Revolutionary War battle. But the minifigs are cool to see. And, and then, then here to the very uh, end of this table, I believe this is a Vic Viper. Um, it's from like a TV show. I really should stop talking. I, <laughs> like I a, a too much Battlestar stuff. Galactica type yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. so, so something cool, along those lines. Cool. And, and moving on down then here. we'll come come back here just to make sure we don't miss anything. We hit the back table there. I want to make sure we didn't miss that. So now we'll come back down this aisle, this side here. Uh, start with the the pirate friends here. So you saw some. Some cool uh, pirate builds earlier. This is the Pirate Friends. So that's really neat. And we'll keep coming down uh, this direction. And you've got uh, the VV Serration, uh, which is a little spaceship. And then Neighborhood Trolley by Ben Merrill. And then this awesome spaceship by Peter Maori here is just incredible. It's really amazing the fact that they have these glass plates and you kind of go look up into the underside of it. It's like a home ec class. Yeah, and you get the you can get the mirrors and you can see all the details on the bottom of it. Uh, he also does this. I love this white backdrop that he does on his uh, builds because you can it allows you to take great photos uh, if you for the public and things you know sh show show to people later. So he, he always has some incredible spaceships. You always count on Peter to bring some really awesome builds every year to Brickworld here, and he, he didn't disappoint this year either. And we pointed out the sketches, right? Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah, but there are some, some really cool sketches that he I think he kind of uses as he's planning out the builds. So massive, massive, massive drawing tablet. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of done a story over the years with several of his builds, so you can, can see some of the, the text he has laid out here, some of the photos and things like that. Uh, Cool things like that. Um, here's some. So you got Batman's Lair. You got some some fantasy builds. Uh, I like that. That please don't touch is an interesting little Lego block soft thing there. Soft Lego, soft Lego, Lego soft. Mm -hmm. That's a thing. Something like that. And then the helicopter there is that in uh, like an updated that's mock like version of the Dino. Of the dino no, not even updated. Is that? I think that's 100 percent verbatim. Is it? The, okay. the Dino helicopter set. Yeah. So the total. So yeah, that's uh, a yeah, theme more, you don't see very I often. Guess this is like Lego space shuttle sets through the years, so we can see 80s or the recent Town Line. Uh, older town line maybe or NASA sets actually and then uh, I want to say uh, you know what maybe I don't know space shuttles that well it is space shuttles Lots throughout space the years shuttles. yeah there like, are... this is just to say that Legos made more than one space shuttle set mm -hmm. I'll leave it at that <laughs> and nice cool wind turbine there in the back of that build another one of these soft brick don't please don't touch the creations uh, interesting things Here's uh, Tony Stark's factory, quick little Marvel build there. So all his different suits of armor and stuff you can see in there. That's cool, cool little build. Uh, Bionicle Army, so a uh, little, little bit more Bionicle. Uh, really clustered together here, uh, all, all ready to do battle. And then this is, these are some lovely mosaics by uh, the wonderful EJ and Abby Bokan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they always bring some, some really awesome mosaics. You've got, like, Grumpy Cat... Uh, you know, some Batman, Iron Man mosaics, 
Uh, this is the the Batman slapping slapping Robin meme, and he's got several meme mosaics like the Grumpy Cat and. Uh, these are always really cool to see at each show. And the lovely Bill Murray mosaic, uh, wonderful Bill Murray. Um, and uh, really interesting usage of the grill tiles to kind of achieve a little bit of a, a differentiation by altering their orientation. So overall, pretty great, pretty great. Moving on down, the most interesting mosaic in the world. Mm-hmm. And uh, once again, using the same subtle variations of uh, you know color and form, and using the round uh, you know two by two plates to kind of uh, overlay onto uh, another color to add that visual interest, and really just a, a wonderful mosaic all, all in all. And then this one here, I'm not exactly sure if you know what that. I think this this is the wolf logo for something. Uh, apologies for our ignorance on this one. So, uh, with the, yeah, it, it is a very cool mosaic there as well. Keep coming down here. Some cool builds, the Innocence of Seals. I think it's like they might still be setting some stuff up there with that build. And then, uh, this is actually, I'm going to go ahead and say before Matthew starts talking, one of his favorite builds that caught his eye right away. So I'm sure he has some, some great things to say about this. It, it recently, it has become aware, uh, I have become aware that the uh, click hinge in light bluish gray is available at many LEGO stores. And uh, I took it upon myself to acquire a cup of said part and attempt to do the most interesting things I could with them. And uh, I arrived at this convention and I saw this creation. And uh, wouldn't you know that this might be the most interesting usage of the click hinge. So these are some hexagons that have been created by just sort of sandwiching those click hinges together and then keeping careful track of uh, every, everything lining up properly. But uh, basically it's just like a biodome and uh, just uh, using these click hinges and these wonderful joints and all this great geometry, but uh, really, really wonderful, wonderful build uh, using... Um, Maybe not the best part in the world to do one of the coolest things. I don't know. And shout out to who, who built that? That's, that's that person right okay. there. Okay. Alyssa Kirkpatrick, I believe. So, uh, nice. yes. Very nice. Very, very and, talented and also builder. also a build of SR Crown Hall. This is at the Illinois Institute of Technology <laughs> over uh, on the south side, south portion of Chicago. Uh, one of uh, Mies van der Rohe's uh, wonderful buildings at the Illinois Institute of Technology. Another building by Alyssa. Mm-hmm. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> Some very cool builds there. So here's a, a Chicago Lug mosaic uh, by, by the same builder. Uh, this is Loki from Marvel Universe. You might be familiar with him. And then down here, Batman Arkham City. So this is a, a really cool mosaic. This is one of my favorites this year. I just love the, the different colors they use to give that, that kind of Batman dark feel to the mosaic. They did a great job with that. And is this, I think they have like a wooden frame on this, like an, almost like a picture frame type of thing as well. So that's really cool. They kind of went the extra step with that and look a little fancier. And then we are back to the Guido family right there. And so that brings us back towards, uh, this is a Toro Lug once again. Yep, we'll we go down earlier. the other side of Toro Lug here. So this is uh, StarCraft, which is a collaborative, several builders, Simon Liu, uh, se- several other builders you've got here, and all sorts of really cool little uh, StarCraft theme builds stretching all across here. So little little tiny micro builds, micro and So we and things. have uh, many creators credited here. Simon Liu, John Moffat, Cecile Fritschvo, Tim, uh, and I'm going to murder that name as well, and then a guy named Chris. <laughs> Apologies to the, the, the contributors here. We uh, hope we did not butcher your names too bad. Uh, try to give credit to the builders wherever possible. Uh, down here, some lovely camera equipment, really nice <laughs> tripod, cool lights. Uh, they were uh, photographing the creations earlier. So these are the collabs that are assembled at a convention and then taken down. So the only way to kind of get a photo to capture what this collab looked like is to try and grab a photo here at the convention center. So bringing some photography equipment and making that happen is uh, really important to the people that contribute to the collaborative displays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they try to get some photos of builds that way. Uh, I love this... Uh, this kind of stained glass classic space window that's really awesome so that's like actual stained glass there with the the classic space benny minifig uh that really caught my i thought that was a really interesting idea and then coming down here this is robert turner brought this awesome uh the gravtech odyssey a really cool spaceship uh this year that uh just made great use he's got this this big circle area in the middle he's got some of the star wars planets at the back here uh, really cool part usages in there. 
Uh, down here, a couple spaceships by Nick Trotta. Some some really cool, nice smooth lines on those. He does a great job. A really uh, wonderful color blocking, conceptual massing, all that kind of stuff. Uh, as a form, these ships are so well executed. Just uh, the geometry and all that stuff. It, from afar, it really does not look like Lego. And then you step closer and you say, oh, wow, you can start seeing the lines and the pieces. But overall, just uh, just an uh, uh, unreal um, degree of talent and skill uh, exhibited in these two creations. Mm-hmm. And we keep moving down here, and we've got this the Spear of Destiny, which is this massive ship built by uh, Rolf Holbrook, uh, another uh, Toronto builder. Uh, AKA, just a, AKA Rook on Flickr. Yeah. You might be familiar with him on Flickr as Rook. Uh, just I don't even know the exact feet on this build, but uh, a little shout out to Torlug here if you can make that out through the video. Uh, these are grill plates, kind of uh, spelling out Torlug. Pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he. Made sure to include the, the lug name on there, but yeah, this build is absolutely huge. Really awesome spaceship here. So then moving down past that, uh, past the, the wonderful green bar that we mentioned earlier. Very, very great. One of, one of the best creations, really, we have to say, at Brickworld this year. And take, take one more look at it here as we walk by. Just absolute lunacy. So that's what that is. <laughs> never, never before seen in the history of Brickworld, as far as I know, as someone built a, a, a Duplo life-size bar at the show. Uh, coming around here, we don't want to make sure we hit this build. This is a really cool uh, Gundam mech by Imagine Rigney, uh, who b built the Bank of the Prophet that I mentioned was here last year. Uh, this mech is just insane. The size of this thing has got lighting in it. Uh, it does a really great job with these builds. Uh, definitely uh, look for a more uh, in-depth video on the page for that. We'll definitely be talking to him about that build for sure uh, later in the show. Certifiably next level, once again. It yeah, never fails to disappoint, imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, coming down here, this is some more gamer lug stuff. Uh, you got some, a lot of builds by Nick Jensen in this area. Uh, a lot of Halo 2, Halo 3 builds. Some, some Destiny weapons, Titanfall. Uh, all sorts of Call of Duty. Uh, really cool stuff. Destiny Ghost, just wonderful geometry in all of Nick's builds. Uh, just he's really able to kind of pack in a lot of uh, interesting techniques into such a small, small, tight space. Mm -hmm. uh, down here, you got a Halo 4 uh, battle rifle, Borderlands 2 uh, weapons. Very nice. Uh, really cool build by Simon Liu here. I love the use of the the pick a brick cup uh, kind of lid as the the eye almost on that with the light in it. It's a really interesting idea. Kind of flashes back and forth there. And it looks like that's the, the base on that isn't that big. I wonder, I'm not sure how supported that is, but it looks like that hopefully doesn't fall over too easily. Some really artful, careful balancing going on there, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Here we've got yeah. some cool uh, castle ruins type uh, of stuff. So this is a really interesting round build, You're not your usual type of castle build. Uh, some really cool like foliage and stuff done in it to make it look kind of old and run down. Uh, with the the ruins look and that there, like the way they stack the tiles looks really nice too down in there. And we'll keep coming down here real quick. Uh, excuse us, guys. Thank you. And uh, just you you'll notice that you might notice some people throughout the. There's still people in the convention halls. We're doing this, so uh, we try not to get in people's way as we go around. Uh, this is the other side of the, the builds by uh, Rocco Boudelier, which still apologize if we're messing his name up. And so uh, here we can kind of see he's basically laying out uh, the, some of the buildings near the Chicago River. Here we see the Aeon Center. And uh, what's really interesting is that you can kind of uh, appreciate that the elevation change. So this building is uh, several bricks up off the table here, the Aeon Center. And then as we move down closer to the Chicago River down here, it sort of uh, it gets a little bit squatter, you know, as as if to indicate that there actually is an elevation change, and there is, uh, you know, there's it, it, it's a little bit higher up uh, over there. So the fact that he's able to render out the terrain like that, just really uh, absolutely incredible. And all of these builds in of themselves are creations uh, really worth praising and talking about for uh, a long period of time. But to put them all together like this, it's just uh, quite nearly uh, overwhelming. And I believe his end goal is to uh, finish off uh, a large section of uh, the downtown Chicago area. So uh, I guess we'll hope to be seeing more from him in the future. Mm -hmm. And then moving on down, we have uh, a really nice, this is like a Hobbit town, it, it appears. 
Yeah, so this is almost, yeah, like uh, the, the Shire here. This is Matthew Green, and he, he adds this. This is kind of right when you walk in the door almost, and he, it's a nice dose of color. If you look around, there's a lot of these builds are kind of darker colors, so it's cool to see a build like this. It's all bright, you know, greens, yellows, things like that. Uh, that keep, keeps the build nice and bright, and then has all the different Hobbit characters and all the different Hobbit homes and things. That's really neat. We keep moving down this direction, then past that, and you can see uh, here's actually a uh, little Lord of the Rings army there with some of the soldiers from that. Uh, here's, uh, I guess so this is... Some biological creations mm -hmm. with a track going around them. And then moving <laughs> along, we see, this is like Grumman's Chinese Theater, and I believe it's using some of the elements from the Palace Cinema Set, yeah. which is interesting because the Palace Cinema Set is uh, kind of taking a lot of uh, notes from uh, Grumman's Chinese Theater and other uh, kinds of, I guess, Mongolian-Asian uh, sort of themed uh, theaters that were built in that same time period. But a uh, really cool mock there uh, that... Uh, yeah, kind of a subtle nod to a historic building. Sure, and yeah, those those pieces definitely do lend themselves well to that. Uh, down here, the Rescue Ranger. Uh, this is from Team Fortress Two, so some cool builds there from that game. This is uh, our imagined living room. Uh, the person wrote on the mock card kind of turned into a house. Our group. So I guess this is kind of their, maybe a dream house type thing. Not sure what exactly they were going for with this build. Uh, interesting little note there. Going down here, here's a Twilight for from uh, My Little Pony. So if you're a fan of that show, cool little mosaic. And then here's this, it's like a theater thing and it's on a wood cart and they can like roll it in and out and it has a whole sound system underneath in that wood cart and there's all these lights and they're coordinated to the music and oh, all kinds of stuff. And as you can see, it's probably displaying a Brickworld 2013 trophy. So uh, this is kind of like a fixture, I guess, at Brickworld. You see it every year and uh, it's playing all sorts of music every year. So very cool. And it says a live 2007 tour at Bricksburg Arena. So maybe this mock is from 2007. I guess we should talk to the builder and find that out. Anyway, moving on down, we have some really interesting spaceships hanging out here on the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all sorts of cool stuff. It looks like these are all done by a builder named Drew Lehman. So he's got some you know, micro builds, a little bit bigger ones, uh, some, some really cool parts he's used in there. Uh, very nice spaceships there. So you keep moving down this direction. You can see uh, some of the builders are still hard at work here on their builds. So as the as late as we get late Friday night here and the public are coming in tomorrow, they're still trying to finish up some builds. This is a really cool uh, Technic sand crawler uh, built by I believe uh, Calvin Hartley. I believe is the name on the the mock card there. So this has all sorts of. I was talking about to him about this earlier. He said the the doors open up. There's all sorts of moving tracks inside there and stuff. And so when they actually get that running, it's it's really cool to see. You can see all the kind of yellow Technic. Uh, they covered some of it up with like the gray and brown base base plate type stuff. Keep moving down here. And here we see some lovely creations by Brian Williams. And Brian is known for mm -hmm. doing some really lovely, like, uh, movie-themed builds. And, of course, that's what we have here. So, uh, starting off, uh, we have some uh, EM50 stripes. That's what we got there. And then to the left of that, The Guardian. And then to the left of that, Classic Time Machine from George Paul's The Time Machine. Very, very cool. And then here, Brick to the Future. This is the theme of Brickworld this year. So this is uh, Brick to the Future, a DeLorean. And it looks like he's using uh, metallic silver there as the color. And it looks so. like he went with the, the kind of, we were talking about with Peter's spaceship earlier, kind of the mirror technique of, so you can see the un underside of it, which is always cool, kind of see more detail of the build. A lot of time, you know, builders might spend a lot of t uh, t time and techniques doing the bottom of their creations, but... Uh, you would never be able to see it, but with these mirrors, you know, as you walk up, it kind of catches your eyes, so that's you always nice. you got to find a way to sort of uh, allow the bottom to be seen, and a lot of builders this year, for I, I guess I've seen this thing once or twice, but there's a couple of creations here this year using those mirrors to kind of uh, display the underside, so very, very cool. Mm -hmm. And then coming here, we have the uh, fake moon landing stage, so <laughs> if you don't believe in that conspiracy, you know... Uh, that uh, they just uh, put a sound stage together and made it look like they went to the moon, then there's your Lego realization of said conspiracy that theory. may very well be what it looked like. So <laughs> here we go how to photograph the atomic bomb. So this is, I guess, is this supposed to uh, fake atomic bomb backdrop and they're 
So maybe uh, this is just like conspiracy theories sort of rendered out in Lego. That's kind of cool. And then moving on down here, we have uh, the church thermometer or thermostat. So this is like uh, based on a Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., uh, his letter from Birmingham Jail, a wonderful piece of literature, and uh, just kind of uh, a representation of some of the thoughts expressed in that um, sort of uh, piece of uh, writing that uh, Martin Luther King Jr. put together. And then coming on down a little bit further, here we have like a, a cushion, a pillow cushion, made out of uh, one by one rounds. And uh, you might be thinking, uh, that shape looks like it's impossible, you know, not able to be done. But uh, this is used, or this is used a technique uh, that involves the, kind of like a, uh, using like a, a uh, it's very hard to describe, it's like a, fi- a Lego fishnet piece, and then you sort of uh, sandwich uh, mm-hmm. one by one rounds together, and then you're able to kind of make this netting. Uh, and uh, it really, really, um, kind of a sort of temperamental technique, but really, really cool. It's an incredible build, too, looking at it. It's so realistic looking. Uh, you, you think you're looking at, like, normal fabric when you first look at this. So uh, he, he did a really great job with that build. And down here we've got some builds by Evan Bordessa, uh, some some really and really a, talented builders. Nice gentle reminder to, to support the Portal project as it is still alive. So yes, Lego said no, we don't want this Portal Ideas project that got 10,000 votes, and then they went out and made their own Lego Dimensions Portal product. But uh, apparently now it's cool to do it again. So go out and support them, and hopefully we'll get a Lego Ideas Portal set. Mm-hmm. So lots of cool builds along here. Here's the the grand balcony. Looks like maybe from Beauty and the Beast. Uh, really nice little build there. Uh, down here, there's uh, Chris Perrin, I believe is how you say his name. Has these these kind of matching spaceships in different colors. Uh, really cool little techniques using some larger curved pieces there for the spaceships. Then here we have a Halo Sentinel Spire. So if you're a Halo fan, I'm sure this is uh, tickling you pink, as it were. But uh, here, just uh, really, really interesting snot techniques, kind of using these bricks uh, laying on their side to kind of uh, uh, allow it to look like a poured concrete sort of form. But uh, really just a bold, bold design and very, very clean execution. Very, very nice. Mm -hmm. Always some cool Halo builds here usually every year. And then this is the the Hurricane Fleet. Uh, So you can see kind of all the same blue, white, and gray uh, type colors in here, all different large large and small ships, kind of matching colors there. And then we'll cover this. This is a, a really cool uh, World War II bridge build. This is the, the Ludendorff Bridge, uh, or Bridge at Remagen, as it's sometimes known. Uh, there was a, an actual bridge in World War II uh, that was uh, heavily contested by the Germans and Americans, and some Really interesting backstory to this bridge. So uh, I was talking to the builder about this earlier. He's pointing out like the, the towers protecting each end, things like that. Uh, some, some really cool stuff there. And he even has old photos of the bridge and some historical uh, backdrop to it here as well. So then coming down this side here, uh, we've got this is uh, Jameson Guy and Pan's uh, awesome. Wing spread build by uh, Frank Lloyd Wright building that I believe this building is in uh, Wisconsin. Yes, it is in Wisconsin. This is uh, Frank Lloyd Wright's, uh, one of his most notable works, and uh, a really lovely build by Jameson in the fact that it's really uh, so uh, clean and kind of uh, thoughtful, you know. It doesn't look like anything here was just kind of done on a whim. Uh, really, really um, just uh, executed down to the, the T of accuracy. And uh, over the, the time period that Jameson was building this, he sort of uh, posted updates to his Flickr profile and was kind of, uh, you know, showing his progress. And he also put together like a little blog or a website called uh, buildingwingspread.com where he sort of gave a more thorough breakdown of his thought process and the, the uh, you know, kind of techniques and sort of uh, pains that he was going through and uh, all that stuff uh, when he was uh, creating the creation. So very, very awesome uh, model. Uh, really enough good things cannot be said. Uh, wonderful, wonderful build. And Jameson has a habit of bringing these amazing, uh, typically Frank Lloyd Wright-inspired builds every year to uh, Brick World. And uh, I guess, you know, this is absolutely uh, pushing the boundaries of... Uh, what he did last time. This is just uh, another level, so we'll have to see what happens at Brickworld uh, 2016.
Mm-hmm. And then coming along here, we have this is a hexagonal kind of collaborative display. So this is a micro scale castle layout, pirate layout. And uh, I believe this was done, uh, coordinated by David Gregory, but they, I, I want to say that there are some other contributors to this. And so they're using the, um, that is a, how many sided uh, plate, uh, Josh? I believe a seven sided? Eight. No, eight, eight sided plate. So yes. eight sided plate, octagon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so that's their kind of the, the base they use for all of it. So it take you know, if, if you can have those plates and you can build on top of that, then you can fit it in with the rest of them there. And those octagon Lego elements are kind of hard to use, so a very nice, interesting use for those octagon elements. And then coming along here, there's a Legend of Zelda kind of board map, I suppose. So this mm-hmm. is inspired by the game and kind of gives a little bit of a rundown of some of the stuff that you might interact with in the game. But a uh, lovely train going around there and cool castle, all that kind of stuff. Interesting foliage figures. Very, very nice. And then coming on down here, I want to say that this is a Legend of Zelda yeah. mosaic? Th- these were all done Maybe? by uh, Sharon Vance, who's, who does had some really cool mosaics and Zelda builds here in the past. And she, she always brings some really interesting stuff every year. Definitely, definitely. And then moving on down here, we have another wonderful build. This is by... Uh, Robert G. Carney Jr., M.D., so that's a bit of a mouthful there, but uh, you might have seen last year our uh, interview with him. He had a massive castle here as well, and this build is another incredible castle build that he's done. He's done uh, so many of these over the years, just one of the, the most talented castle builders in the community, and he always he always brings something huge here to Brickworld. It's always really cool to see and they're always based on real castles as well. And the beautiful thing about building such a large castle is that once you acquire 20,000 one by 2 gray elements, uh, or any gray element for that matter, um, you really you can do a lot of castles at that point because that is the uh, most popular castle color, I would like to say. So uh, really, really awesome that he's able to kind of sort of sit back and execute something different on a yearly basis that's uh, sort of fresh and new. Mm-hmm. So, moving on down. And then uh, down next to that is his uh, build of the, the te- tomb of a uh, queen in the Valley of the Queens in uh, Egypt. So some some really interesting little details inside there. They're kind of painting the, the tomb and stuff. And all, all that tan looks really nice there for that. And then down this direction... Uh, You've got this uh, this blanket. I'm not sure exactly what if this is custom made or uh, what exactly this all is, but some some cool stuff there. So keep on moving down here. You've got uh, McDonald's. This is really cool. It's kind of the whole play place built here and everything. So, so if you've ever been to a McDonald's with a whiny child, you know that taking them to the play place sort of allows you to diffuse that whininess for a little bit of time. So Solution for tired parents everywhere. <laughs> uh, next to that is a cool little water park. It's uh, a one by two uh, trans blue in some shade of tile. And this is the part that's been available on the pick-a-brick wall. So really cool, kind of dump it out. It looks like water. Nice technique. I love parts dumping. Mm-hmm. It's it's not your usual water technique. Usually you'll maybe see like the one by one studs or things like that. So yeah, it's sort of the, the tile, element. yeah. But it, it is an interesting look there. Here is a cave build that's really interesting. So you kind of get down in there. You can see all the different areas of the caves. It kind of goes back in there. You got some explorers there. Uh, the dragon uh, protecting his treasure. Kind of a, a hobbit type build there as well. So uh, I like the kind of sky background they added to it as well. Whole diorama there. Down here, uh, you've got some, this is by the, the same builders, the, the cave, some mosaics, uh, lenticular mosaics, different kind, 3D type mosaics, Doctor Who, things like that. And then here we have a lovely, uh, these are sort of pine trees that have been built out of inverted uh, 1 by 2 30... 45 degree slopes, I want to say. I'm not too up on my Lego slopes, but uh, either way, a lovely mosaic in the back, trees in the foreground. Um, I think there might be some hidden meeting here that I'm not smart enough to discern, but either way, very cool, and I approve of it. And then moving on down here, we have a lovely aquatic layout. This is using some of the forest uh, police sets and more recent uh, swamp police kind of sets that Lego's been putting out. And there's a Lego mountain hut set, so very nice and then there's a lego beach house set and uh some other lego sets very cool and then coming on down here we see probably one of the best uses of lego brick separators ever (laughs) and so now that lego is putting like 
10 brick separators in every set over $20. I'm sure everyone that buys Lego sets regularly has far too many of these orange brick separators. So uh, once you have one, you're kind of good. You probably need a couple more just in case that one breaks, but you should probably find a cool technique and use them, and uh, this person has. And I think these might be like, they're supposed to look like flowers, I guess, and that's kind of what they look like. So very cool, and A-plus uh, for them. Awesome, awesome. And then moving on down here, we have a little bit of a Winter Village scene, and we see several of the Lego Winter sets and some other uh this is looks like a half completed parisian restaurant i think the winter village has seen better days though judging by the the tanks that are on fire and the the soldiers attacking and explosions so uh, it's not the quiet little winter village scene you're used to seeing around christmas time yep and so coming along here we have some other lego this is a lego friends boat set very nice and then here's a lego lighthouse set and then this is a Lego SpongeBob set, and that's a Lego R2-D2 set. And then this is an older Lego minifigure set. This is like a sculpture kind of set that Lego put out. Now, in back. the middle there, don't miss among all the sets, though, there is this cool custom Jenga built by Zach Davis that's uh, really neat kind of... You know, Lego obviously lends itself well to those kind of rectangle pieces. So see if Matthew can take a piece out here without knocking the whole thing over. I'm not doing He's that. A- that's <laughs> disrespectful to Mr. Davis. <laughs> and we also don't want to knock it all over, so we, w- we won't try that. But uh, some cool custom Jenga there. Uh, down here we've got some, some more cool mosaics. This is an absolutely massive one done by uh, Jeremy Moody. This is figure five. No, that, that's the next one. This is Sunday afternoon, actually. So... Uh, done by Jeremy Moody. And so this is actually a Lego rendition of a painting by George Surratt. And so what's really cool about George Surratt is that he uses a pointillism technique. So his whole painting style is predicated on little tiny dots of color and uh, just that using that to kind of allow you to sort of fill in the dots uh, as uh, I believe he would be uh, considered an impressionist. So this is just like a really kind of subtle nod to George Surratt and his technique of painting by using these one by one round uh, Lego plates. So uh, really fantastic. And, and one of the things that you might not notice until you look a little bit closer is the fact that these one-by-one round plates have color uh, kind of in between them. And that's because there's like another layer beneath this. So it's like almost like two mosaics in one, just like George Surratt's art. Mm-hmm. So very, very cool. Yeah, and very detailed, though. Those are all one-by-one studs. I'm sure it took him forever to get those on. Here's the figure five in gold that I mentioned earlier, another kind of 3D-type mosaic. Uh, this is Einstein letter mosaic, so this is all, you know, like Lego letters on tiles and symbols on tiles that they used to make Einstein, done by Jeremy Moody as well. This is a really cool mosaic. And then here we have an NXT, and I think this is like an automatic sorting device or something like that. You put a starburst in and it has something to do with, I really don't know what's going on here, but I'm going to try and come up with something that sounds good. So uh, anyway, really amazing creation. Uh, we'll have to definitely check back on this later, and you should probably check for a video about this uh, in the channel uh, after this event is over. Mm-hmm. And coming on down here, some more cool builds. This is an interesting build. I don't think there's a mock card with it, so I'm not sure exactly what it's supposed to be. But it almost looks like a classroom with like computer area and like a lunch area maybe. So uh, it's like a school uh, set up almost. But I like that the round oval uh, type build they have going on there. And here we have what basically amounts to a Lego fat head. And uh, I believe fat heads, uh, I want to say, are those uh, things you stick on the wall. They're mm-hmm. like sports players. The big giant like life-size stickers so you stick on your walls and things. And so this is like a Lego mosaic, but it has these, uh, you know, the edge is uh, not on like a backdrop. It's, it's just kind of hanging. So uh, very cool. And uh, one of the things that allows this to happen is... Uh, uh, brutally massacred base plates and so we can kind of see on the edge here uh, that there is a green base plate that has been cut to kind of um, curve to the mosaic so I I don't know how I feel about that I feel like that could have been avoided by just kind of using plates instead of base plates but I mean base plates are pretty cheap so whatever right Mm-hmm. I, I'm not. I don't like cutting Lego. It's not my thing. But I'm fine with people doing that, and that's cool. So either way, nice, nice mock, and very mm-hmm. nice uh, football, foot sports ball player. And moving on down here, you've got Garrett Churl. I believe is how you pronounce his name. This is uh, Gar City or Gar City, and uh, kind of reminds me of the the Brolug display. Kind of a, almost a smaller version of the, what Brolug has brought here in the past with their kind of uh, 
display with like kind of all the different buildings and things like that. Just kind of a, a lot of chaos in the the whole city here. Kind of like a Blade Runner sort of mm-hmm. S mock, sort of cyberpunk near future, yeah. post Japan, lots of posts and a park <laughs> and very very cool. And then here we have some wonderful uh, yeah, these are incredible flying cars with some amazing stickers on them. And really, the stickers do make this creation. It uh, mostly is it's just a wonderful build, but the kind of just sandwich and layer stickers all over it. And is, the chrome uh, as well. Very, very nice. Just a wonderful execution. And then, then a little bit of a shout out here to the Cooper Works. So uh, Cooper Works providing the stickers for those creations, one would assume. And here we have some interesting Lego sets uh, laid out on the table. And then there's an uh, old uh, gateway computer with a stereo system. That's very interesting. I love to see um, technology on the floor of the Lego convention. I'm sure there is a, a valid... Oh, you know what it is it's here. A valid reason yes. to have this out. This is Lego Island, the video game. And if you ever owned a PC in the 90s and you like Lego a little bit, then, uh, you know, you probably had Lego Island video game. And it really is probably one of the best Lego-themed or related video games that has ever come out. Mm-hmm. Uh, just a wonderful game kind of play for hours. So a retro game and a retro PC. <laughs> and uh, that is completely awesome. I'm just going to click or touch the keyboard to see if it's awake at all. It's probably turned off for the night. It looks like it might be. Let's see. We hit the hit the no, mouse no, there. No, I think it's just it's yeah. gone. We'll we'll have to do a video <laughs> playing uh, Lego Island at some point. That that is. I'm sure a lot of people uh, remember that fondly. A lot of nostalgia connected to that game. So coming along here, you've got some cool uh, kind of. This is the other side of Sharon Vance's uh, display Zelda. with the, the Zelda stuff. And then here we have a water, wonderful, wonderful castle using a lovely part dumping technique in the center. But this is Paradox, Paradox, Paradox by Caleb Schilling. So a really wonderfully executed build. We see some of the medieval market kind of inspired uh, Lego set uh, type things on the side there. And it's sort of a second fiddle to the larger castle creation. And really wonderful incorporation of terrain and just uh, a very interesting uh, execution here. And yeah. so moving on down here, we're back to this. Uh, this is the wing spread that we saw earlier. And we will skip along down to the other island, uh, other side of the island that we were able to cover earlier. And uh, moving right along, right along, we have a, another Lego Parisian restaurant set. Very Before that, nice though, is this oh, interesting another, something else. club brick house, uh, which is kind of, uh, they got like a billboard, all sorts of, you know, minifig action going on here. And uh, some, some really cool, you know, like figs lined up to get in and all that kind of stuff. So in- interesting kind of building there. Uh, Bad Wolf Records, the Karis Arcade. Cool little buildings there. Lovely Lego Palace Cinema set right there. And then here's the Brick World uh, event kit set. Mm-hmm. So the Hill Valley um, from Back, of Beyond, uh, Back to the Future. I was going to say Beyond the Future, <laughs> Beyond the Brick, but no, not the case. So, th- And that is the theme this year, if we haven't mentioned that. Uh, that is the you know, Brick to the Future, I believe, is the, the, the official theme this year. So you'll see some, some builds uh, along those lines. And so here we have a lovely Lego DeLorean. This is kind of a larger scale, scale to a Technic figure, which is that Technic figure standing there out in the front. I believe that would be um, Marty McFly, I want to say? So, I think so, yeah. So wonderful, you, wonderful DeLorean. Orange tracks behind it and everything. Just like, lovely fire. fire mm-hmm. Here is a, uh, down here is a, a Lego Monopoly, so it looks like he's got, uh, you know, all the, the tiles on there, the right colors for each property, uh, really cool little board he's got going on there, even Lego dice with the game as well. So he's used a couple minifigs for the, the pieces, so he does a great job with that. And then moving on down here, got a uh, Scooby-Doo mosaic, uh, a couple Lego mosaics here, so kind of the Lego logo done with mosaic, some cool tile work there. Down here, we have a builder that doesn't want us to see their mocks, so <laughs> yeah, we guess we'll, oh well. Uh, moving on down, we have some builds by Grayson Bites, and so he's uh, the author of that medieval Lego book that's coming out in a little bit, and he has a nice base plate here with some flower stems on it and one by one lime green. Uh, Plates. Looks like it's like an archery range, so like yeah. archery practice, he's got some targets at one end and then archers at the other end. Uh, interesting, and then he also has another base plate on a little stand there with a map of, uh, I believe that would be Ireland, uh, Scotland, and uh, England. So uh, definitely the medieval theme, and that's why he wrote the medieval Lego book. Mm-hmm. Here we have something absolutely staggeringly wonderful. 
This is, uh, I believe, Tharsis City of Machines. You can see that the builder continuing to work it on it here late into the night. <laughs> so uh, really, really cool, unique build here. Lots of cool little details as they finish putting that together. Uh, down here is some really cool builds, aircraft carrier and things. And then also what we have in the foreground, this is a Lego quadcopter. And then this is a, oh, another creation, the aircraft carrier in the back being built by Jacob as well. But this is another one of Jacob's creations. And I think recently Jacob's been getting into these uh, Lego, or uh, not Lego, but quadcopters themselves. And so he's decided to sort of render out a Lego quadcopter. So he's used non-Lego engines and non-Lego uh, different control elements. But uh, the actual like frame of the structure is in fact Lego. And so uh, what's really amazing about these quadcopters is that they have to be perfectly balanced. So he's been able to really uh, kind of achieve a really perfectly balanced uh, frame and a frame that's light enough to be able to be lifted up by the quadcopter uh, framework. So uh, I would love to see this fly around the convention center at some point, and I'm sure we will, but uh, a wonderful, wonderful build by Jacob. Mm -hmm. Here's some, some really detailed builds done by Nathan Schmidt. Uh, moving on down here, we've got the, the B-17 bomber that's just all the, the tiles look so nice. You can barely spot a stud on there. Uh, really cool details there. Lamborghini, uh, nice tank, uh, r really cool stuff there. This is a bank robbery that appears to be in progress, so interesting stuff. And then as we move down further here, uh, this is a lot of little vignettes by uh, Max Pointner, uh, who, this is a kind of clue vignettes. Uh, he built a, uh, Ian Spacek, and another builder that works with uh, Max, uh, did some uh, clue board down here. So uh, you see some of these similar builds like that. That's uh, Implug, Ian, Max, and Paul. So you, I'm sure you'll see, so here's some of Paul's builds, the GK Chesterton in the left here. So uh, they, they do a lot of really cool work together. As we keep on moving down here, some cool builds there by Lee Muzzy. You got some, some interesting little planes and spaceships. And some other wonderful builds by Paul as well here. We have Paul, Matthew, Ben, Lee, Ian. So lots and lots of different builders contributing to this like little collaborative. And it says Brick Time Stories. And so these are like Lego book scenes, you know, with or Lego books, I guess, with scenes sort of popping out of them. So it's like the literature's inspired the builds, all these kind of stuff, and some real books to kind of hold up the creations. So and just a wonderfully thought out sort of collaborative and just a really, really great effect uh, of the whole thing. If you saw last year our video of the Princess Bride, that's a, a lot of the builders that were involved with that are did these builds here. So. Uh, you know, going from the Princess Bride to these, they got some, some really cool uh, book builds here as well uh, that they did a great job with. And, and keep coming on down this direction. Uh, some more. This is Tron. Welcome to the Grids. This is an interesting... You usually don't see Tron builds at, like the minifig scale like this. Mostly because Tron is like 100% black <laughs> with like, a couple other different colors thrown in there. So doing that in Lego is not the easiest thing ever. But uh, here they've been able to kind of capture the essence of the Tron movie with a, a nice little minifig scale build. Mm -hmm. And then coming on down here, we have a really wonderful mosaic. And uh, this is just called Blonde. And it looks like something that Roy Lichtenstein uh, would paint. Something like a, almost like a comic book style mm -hmm. sort of painting. Graphic novel type thing. Yes, definitely. And uh, this is just a really large scale mosaic. And uh, so large that it requires like a custom built uh, sort of frame holder uh, easel type of thing uh, made out of, uh, I guess it would appear to be PVC tube. So very, very cool there. And then sort of panning around here. Yep. We'll come and take a come look down. This. this is a Harley Davidson uh, like a Lego billboard thing. And so it's got this uh, dark red kind of billboard backing and uh, a bunch of Harley Davidson motorcycles in there in like a display case. Really cool lighting he's put in the builder put in there as well to kind of uh, really make each motorcycle stand and out. It's uh, up on a pedestal, which is really, really interesting. So, nice pedestal there. Mm -hmm. And then cool. to the right of that, make sure we cover real quick, uh, here's the, the Death Star Trench. Uh, so, this is, uh, the builder has several interesting lights he's put in here as well. I don't know, it's hard to see him right now, but uh, this is really detailed. So many little uh, gray pieces he put in there to, to add some really cool detail to that build. So then, moving on down the side of this display. This is starting the Kenosha lug display. So it's a Kenosha Lego users group in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Uh, lots of cool builds they've got here. Let's start with a large beach scene. 
come down here to kind of their their city layout that they have with uh, a lot of the cool modular buildings and then they got their their train that always runs around the the track there throughout their city town hall building uh with kind of a nice park area there you get the the statue and everything with that uh some very interesting you got the the palace stars casino so again kind of a uh, palace cinema inspired build like we were talking about earlier really lends itself nicely to that coming out along here we've got uh some more of the kenosha lug builds uh these are done several of these are done by nick moore and then you can also see kind of the k-lug logo in the back there are several different versions of that like a a one by four brick down here, uh, some Batman builds, uh, Temple of Light, like a Ninjago type build. Uh, the, <laughs> here's the, the Bionicle 2015 hype dr train. <laughs> so uh, for everyone who's excited about Bionicle, uh, you might have jumped on that train at some point here as uh, their LEGO has announced that they're releasing more Bionicle sets. So if you're excited for that, there's your, your hype train for you. Here is the Apollo 8 with the crawler transporter. This is done by John Wolf. A uh, really incredible build. We interviewed here, him last year about this and uh, so much, so many awesome details in this and just such a massive build. And that crawler actually moves and everything. He's uh, got it all set up so that he can actually move very slowly, but it does move. And just an amazing scale, really, overall. So, and moving on down here, we have some uh, wonderful builds by uh, Nightly News at 9. This is uh, David Pickett. Uh, I want to say, and uh, just uh, really, really nice, nice, nice builds here. We have some wonderful, like, kind of cartoon characters, different uh, TV uh, personalities rendered out here. And uh, he has the YouTube play button, which uh, you, fellow YouTube viewer, uh, should be very familiar with. Very, very nice. And then coming along here, we have the collaborative skyscraper. Uh, and so this is like a collaborative that was sort of proposed here at Brick World, and the idea was that uh, the skyscraper would be built on a 32 by 32 base plate uh, by basis, and these were going to be like floors, and you could either do a double height or a single height, and uh, you simply just kind of build windows and walls onto a base plate, and then all these builders are able to stack out their different uh, modular sections and create this uh, pretty cool looking skyscraper. So friends in the lobby, and uh, it looks like Brian and some other people were behind uh, coordinating and putting it together. Very, very nice. Coming along here, we have uh, some of... Uh, this is, I believe... Connor Lil's builds, and these are really wonderful, wonderful different um, kind of organic mechs, is I guess what you could call them. So, some interesting stuff here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all sorts of... These these mechs are really incredible. The, the way he... The detail he gets in these, the colors he uses, just blends really nicely. Connor's got a ton all along here that he does. Uh, he's displayed these. This is the, the Brickworks Industries tables here, so... Uh, some some really cool stuff that he always brings, you know, cool mock cards. He's got talking about each one and stuff. Lots of gray and white uh, being used very effectively. So nice, nice, nice. And then coming along here, we have a little bit of a scene uh, kind of built out. And this is a weapons depot on mech storage facility. So we can see that the mechs are being stored here. And it's like a protected base. And they're uh, just kind of uh, avoiding being infiltrated by what looks like some kind of post-apocalyptic uh, war scene. So, awesome, awesome stuff. And then here we see a really wonderful, wonderful layout with uh, lots of amazing different uh, mechs and creations. Spot the builder there in the corner there. So, uh, he's still hard at work on the display here. All, always building new mechs, uh, cool new details they add to this layout. I always look forward to seeing this at each show. Uh, so some really cool stuff in this layout. Very, very nice stuff. Amazing, amazing. And then coming along even more, I believe we are approaching some of Arthur Gugit's uh, work. Gugik, Gugik, uh, I'm very bad at names. So here we have a, uh, these are using some of the old Lego modular road pieces, and uh, Arthur's kind of gone and done just uh, a bunch of interesting, almost like postmodern Lego mosaics. So I guess once you sort of do enough Lego mosaics that are of the normal variety, you kind of have to sort of think outside of the box. So here he has uh, what might be this, like, the most subtle Lego creation ever, if you can even... I guess it is a Lego creation, but uh, if you're familiar uh, with uh, the pricing of certain Lego elements, you'll know that uh, the green base plate used to be uh, Lego's normal green color, and it used to retail for the price of $4.99. And uh, recently, Lego decided to 
to entirely discontinue the normal green Lego base plate in favor of the new bright green 32 by 32 Lego base plate, and in doing so, increase the price to $7.99. So, uh, pretty significant price increase, and uh, also significant color change. So, I- I'm sure Arthur maybe feels some type of way about this change, and that's what inspired this creation, but uh, such a subtle build, and yet so much hidden meaning. Mm-hmm. I really like this one he's got here with the tiles and kind of building it up almost 3D like uh, trying more than just the the flat little tiles so he's got the cool different colors in there quilt type thing almost so really interesting stuff here's a uh, one by two uh, one by one but it makes a one by two and it's using two uh, round one by one plates so awesome stuff here and here's a bunch of jewel pieces with uh, two by two tiles with stud in the center I believe is the official name and uh, once again interesting patterns Tetris effect going on here and uh, just kind of coming along we have a bunch of other cool stuff and here we have some, uh, it looks like he has a vote for your favorite quilt patches so um, so he has each of them numbered I think if you see the, the little 2x2 two two has uh, numbers on them and so you can circle uh, choose up to 5 of your favorites it says circle your favorites and you vote on on which one pieces you like best. So kind of getting some, some public participation with the builds. And so here we have Arthur's uh, business card holder and moving on down, a mosaic of Albert Einstein. And so this is like a, almost like a, I guess you could call it lenticular, but not really, it's just kind of at an angle. But either way, a very cool build. And you'll notice that this is the second Albert Einstein yeah. Lego mosaic in the exhibition space today. Both Going, very unique, though, because, you know, we, we showed you the one earlier. It was all, you know, flatter and kind of used the, the uh, letter tiles so a different direction here with uh, kind of the sloped thing, but still both really cool, uh, unique mosaics. Yes, lots of wonderful printed tiles here in these mosaics. Here's a John Lennon mosaic, very nice, very nice. Coming on down, we see um, the girl with the pearl earring. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so this is a painting by Vermeer, and this is a Lego mosaic by Arthur Guggen. You've got Jimi Hendrix next to that, so he's got all sorts of, of really cool mosaics along here. And then, uh, just briefly mention here, uh, Grayson McLean has the city of Kataru, I believe is how that's said, and so a little, nice little uh, ancient city type build. And we'll keep going down this direction then to uh, what is uh, a really cool GBC. Once again, you can see uh, some of the builders still hard at work here late into the night, uh, getting this all fixed up, maybe some lighting, things of that nature. Uh, you get, yeah, they brought off the heavy equipment, the pliers uh, for this build. Uh, these GBCs, you got to make sure you keep them all running, so some cool stuff there. Yes, yes. Wonderful, wonderful build. Mm-hmm. Uh, wh- just real quick, if you have time, what are you working on right now? Are you trying to fix something in particular? So I'm working on the lighting on the flying saucer. Um, because it turns and because we're powering it by the wall, um, we're using a dragging system for the positive and negative connections, and it's just not touching the, the, the space okay. right enough yet. So it, it, it is off and on. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, hopefully you get that figured out. Good luck with that. <laughs> so you can see uh, some builders definitely still working here on their builds. Uh, here's uh, I Heart Columbus. This is the Ohio lug in Columbus, Ohio. Here is where a lot of these builders in this area are from. So... Uh, coming down here, you got a little putt-putt golf area, which is really neat. And then this, uh, this is almost like a... It's an amazing cathedral. Mm-hmm. Lots of dark uh, dark blue on the roof. Uh, you can't go wrong with that. Uh, what can you say, right? Very, very well done cathedral. Here, uh, if we come around to the, the front here, uh, really awesome uh, Lord of the Rings build. This is the Tower of Orthanc, uh, done by... Uh, Brendan McMahon. Uh, we'll definitely have a more in-depth video of this. It looks like he's actually taking the top section off right now, but uh, look, definitely look for a more in-depth uh, video of this in the future. And I guess he set the top section right here on this table, so uh, there you go. And yeah, Chelsea Donis built this, the Indigo Cathedral that we mentioned earlier. So uh, really cool architecture styles in there. A great job with that and landscaping and everything. So, so moving along here, we have some wonderful builds by uh, Ben Koifman, and these are really, really uh, amazing different uh, train builds. And one of the best things about Ben's builds are his uh, stickers that he's able to use. And so he's not really relying on stickers as a crutch to uh, sort of uh, 
kind of allow him to skirt the uh, certain Lego techniques. He, like uh, he, he's basically using them to accentuate beautiful builds, and so he's actually um, advertising some uh, stuff on his website, trainedbricks.com. So if you want to get instructions for those Conrail engines right there, uh, you can just head to his website. And you can also find some stickers and all kinds of cool stuff. Mm-hmm. And then taking a moment to sort of pan back here. We can kind of take a look on the floor right here and see uh, an Ohio lug uh, Columbus sign. And so for the longest time, uh, this group was uh, generally referred to as uh, Central Ohio Lego Train Club. Uh, Unfortunately, train clubs are not uh, open to people that don't build trains necessarily. So the group has rebranded more or less to Ohio lug. And uh, they've really come here and shown some amazing stuff this Mm -hmm. year. That's right. So you see we just passed by the GBC again there. And coming back this direction to the other side of uh, Arthur Gujic's displays, uh, some more interesting, you know, kind of art pieces he's got here. Uh, this is the, you can see they're, they're all numbered in the back there as well, like we mentioned earlier for well, the voting system. this one here is called Lots of Lego Blue Parts on a Base Plate. Mm-hmm. And uh, just stacked uh, very high there. <laughs> so... Uh, interesting. This is this is kind of an uh, interesting mosaic. It almost looks like a section from that uh, the mosaic we showed you earlier. There was the the one by one stud uh, mosaic, and so cool stuff there. This is kind of comparing what part colors and you know different tiles and things there. Down here, some cool stuff. Uh, this is the showing off the new one by one round kind of flat tiles that came out not too long ago cool stuff there. And here we have some more uh, Lego panel pieces uh, used to create a kind of a maze type you know, structure. Labyrinth type thing. And then uh, coming along here we have some other wonderful builds uh, once again using those Lego panel pieces to create some amazing stuff and uh, here we have some interesting kind of like technic frameworks that have been sort of uh, thrown about a little bit uh, in a, a hazmat or a haz- ha- haphazard there's the word, fashion. Very very cool. And then here we have like a structure made out of Travis bricks uh, just to, it looks like a crystalline kind of structure, like that uh, crystalline uh, structure we saw a little bit earlier. Really, really wonderful. And um, coming along even more, we see some uh, wonderful. This just looks like uh, something you would see at like a postmodern art museum. You know, uh, these very, very geometrically pure structures. Uh, grids and all that kind of stuff. Once again, executed with Travis Bricks. And coming along here, we see some more uh, mosaics in all different types of shapes and colors. And this is something that's pretty awesome. This is um, a bunch of Lego heads on a base plate. And these are these, uh, you know, two by two uh, Lego tiles with stud in center. And uh, he sort of just has a bunch of heads laying out. And uh, once again, this looks like something that you would see in a modern art museum of some sort. So, uh, hats off. Uh, to you, uh, Arthur, for these uh, wonderful builds. This one here is interesting. It's like a he took the clear and went over the mosaic he made. So it's it almost distorts the mosaic a bit, but you can still see the shape underneath there. It looks like something that's on the bottom of a pool or like refracted mm-hmm. through water almost. And then moving along, we have uh, a couple other wonderful mosaics by Arthur. And then um, an interesting skeletal horse there in the background with a plant on a tan base plate. Very interesting. And, and some hubcaps here in the foreground. Very nice there. And then moving along here, we're going back to this uh, mech layout. And I'm going to hand this over to Josh here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this is uh, the, the mech layout that we showed you a little bit of, of earlier. Uh, some really awesome mechs still in there. So they're finishing setting that up. And then uh, over here, this is the, the Smurfs collaboration uh, done by several builders here at Brickworld. So if you're a Smurfs fan, uh, this is really cool. Uh, little the Smurf houses, all that cool stuff going on there. So very awesome build. Keep moving down, here's uh, Dennis Price, the Glomshire Knights. A little castle, interesting build there. And here in the background, here in the background we have some interesting builds by Brian Monahum. These are uh, local media uh, outlet logos here to the left, and uh, some of those uh, maxi fig Lego mini figs. There's Benny the Spaceman, all kinds of cool stuff. But Brian is uh, very smart to build uh, some of the local TV station logos. So if uh, a local TV station were to happen to arrive in the area, he would have their logo to be able to put on TV news, and uh, that's pretty awesome. So smart marketing there, Brian, something like that. Very cool. Brian is the convention coordinator here at Brick Road. Mm-hmm. And some wonderful builds by Tyler Hollowell. Yes, Tyler. With the channel, you would see many of these videos, right, Josh? 
Josh? Definitely, yeah. So we, we interviewed Tyler about uh, pretty much all the builds he has here at Brickworld and have those posted. Uh, he had those at Brickworld Indie, so definitely make sure to check those out if you have not seen them. Coming down now, we've got the, the other side of the Kenosha lug display. So uh, it's more really cool kind of city train layout. And here's a wonderful lighthouse. And then the, this build has made uh, one or two appearances here at Brickworld before. But uh, really just a wonderful build because of its uh, the cleanliness of its design. Such a sleek build, very clean cut corners. And uh, just a wonderful layout here by uh, the Kayla group. And uh, K-Log really is just a fantastic uh, group of builders um, with some real, real talent. Uh, very impressive uh, display they always put together. And we can see the trolley line running down the center of the street. This is uh, apparently a representative of a trolley line that exists in uh, Kenosha for real. And Kenosha, Wisconsin being Kenosha. And this is the their kind of carnival layout here. So you see all sorts of carnival theme park rides, anything you can imagine carousel ferris wheel uh all the all your favorite rides that you like to do are here so uh, they've even had, added more on they've got kind of a mixels area in the back there with all sorts of cool little mixel creatures and things like that and then uh coming on they got a, a flip and spin and a lot of this stuff is motorized too which when you when you see it motorized it's it's really cool so then we're gonna come over to this side of the aisle and keep keep taking you down here uh, this is some really cool stuff here. This is uh, some work by Mark Choi. He's a Lego artist and painter, as we can see on his business card here. So, very nice work, Mark. And this is really uh, wonderful stuff because it's just, uh, once again, as we saw with Arthur earlier, just like a, a nice abstract usage of uh, Lego in ways that people really don't see normally. And so, basically, uh, what all of this stuff really relies on is the, the ability of Lego elements to flex if many numerous elements are able to be put together and uh, utilized like that. So, very interesting, very interesting work. And uh, coming along down here, we have some, uh, these are like tablets builds uh, by Are. They heisted, and I'm probably not going to pronounce that name correctly. I probably shouldn't even try. Heisedal, uh, and uh, something like that. Are he's from he's from Norway, so yes, yes. Are is someone we had on our show, uh, the uh, the you know the, the podcast, the podcast, as it were. And uh, Are's builds are wonderful because he sort of takes an older town set and then he updates it to look so like something that would come out uh, today in the uh, modern age. And I'm not sure if uh, this layout is impressive because it's uh, just uh, one wonderful in terms of the talent that's being expressed here, or if uh, it's impressive because all of this was brought on a plane from Norway. So that's kind of amazing. Mm -hmm. Bo both parts are amazing, and these yes. are some incredible builds. How so he takes the little tiny original Lego version and makes it uh, much bigger. Yes. Well, uh, well, we have a person here. This is uh, Todd Webb. He's the coordinator of uh, the Brick Fair event uh, in Virginia, and Todd's here to enjoy uh, Brick World. But Todd, the one thing we want to hear from you tonight, we want to hear uh, how do you feel about this layout with the green tarps all over it? Is that cool or is that not that cool? That is weird. Is that that's weird? That's that is weird? very weird. It's uh, it's distracting. It, it's attention grabbing, and I feel bad because something must have happened somewhere to cause them to want to do that. Yeah. Well, that's too bad, Todd. Yeah. It, it sucks. Oh well. Thank you for those uh, comments. Uh, moving down here, you can see the the green tarp uh, display that we were talking about. So I think they they keep this covered up a lot, uh, just security reasons, keep the dust off, all sorts of things like that. Now here is the uh, the virtual lug display. Uh, you might have seen in past years, uh, the virtual lug always comes with a, a really incredible display every year. And they didn't disappoint this year either. This is Around the World in 80 Days is the theme of their display this year. So we'll take you, uh, kind of at the beginning here is the London day one, and then we'll take you down this left side for now, come back and show you the other side later. Uh, all sorts of awesome mosaics kind of covering different sections of the story and then uh, kind of going through some of the, the, the maps and the, the different sites they visit there. So we'll definitely make sure to have a more in-depth video of that uh, posted on the YouTube channel for you to check out. Coming along uh, past some of the, the builders there from Virtual Lug, uh, you can see some, some really interesting spaceship uh, type builds, uh, all sorts of space, space builds here. So this is uh, a lot of uh, Euro bricks and uh, from people, people from there that worked on that. Down here, uh, you can see, we want to make sure we 
catch all the sides here, so we'll come back a little bit this direction. This is a uh, classic space layout. Uh, this is a collaborative. Uh, some of the virtual lug members worked on this and some other people. Uh, Lee Jones, you might be familiar with from other videos we made with him. Uh, so all, all sorts of really talented builders worked on this and it turned out really nice. Here's uh, Micropolis, uh, so you got a, a micro football stadium, little micro brick world area. Various people worked on this and uh, you, the micro buildings are always really impressive and they can get a lot of detail in them and they did a good job with that. Keep moving down here, uh, different Star Wars type layouts, a little bit of city stuff, some small various creations here. This is uh, somewhere near Bastogne, so uh, another World War II build here, uh, toward you know late in the war, 1944, uh, World War II build. This is one brick tower going up, so kind of a cool construction scene there. Down here, uh, some more. A lot of these are by uh, Mark Hendricks, so he did like this. Uh, the tour continues. He's got some some really cool uh, kind of concert stage there. And these past few builds as well were by him. Down here you've got the uh, Death Star, so uh, famous Lego set that's been around for a while there. The Spider-Man Battle Mech. Uh, it's some various uh, different kind of mech type builds there. Lego Movie Cars. Uh, just various small builds here. That's something called the Sky City, which is like a, a little micro map game. And then the Crips here, which is another kind of micro map type game. Uh, here's some more mosaics by E.J. Bocan, who we mentioned earlier. So, uh, you know, minion type builds and things like that. And another really cool mosaic here, this is the tree. Uh, by Amanda Falk. Uh, I hope I pronounced that right. And uh, she did a, a great job uh, with this and uh, you know, kind of three different sections here using horses down here for the, the base of the tree and then kind of all sorts of green cool pieces uh, in the, the rest of it for the leaves and things. So uh, one, of, one of the cooler mosaics here this year. Uh, by the same builder here, you've got Unexpected Guest, which is a uh, kind of green monster type uh, build here with some like medieval guys traveling through the woods. St. George and the Dragon. So uh, this is the, the big giant dragon uh, head that uh, got chopped off there. The Fish uh, is by the same builder as well. And then keep on moving down this direction. This is Kyle Watson. Uh, Ian and Kyle Watson built the town of Bricksboro. So different city streets, uh, all sorts of different buildings they were able to put in there. Here's a quilt of flowers and mini grooms by Jeffrey Fishman. So he did a great job with these, uh, just really cool type mosaic type builds. Here's uh, Alex Wilson, uh, Flags of the World, so uh, really interesting all, all, from all over the world, he's got these builds. Uh, Avengers vs. Ultron, so if you've seen uh, the new uh, Avengers Age of Ultron movie, you might recognize some characters, uh, maybe some scenes from this, uh, really cool, you got Thor, Iron Man, Hawkeye, uh, all sorts of cool characters, even Ultron in the back corner there. And then keep going down, you got a little Star Wars build there. Uh, here's some, some really cool uh, Halo weapons. Uh, these are done by Alex and Nidra, I believe is how you pronounce that. You got the energy sword, the battle rifle, assault rifle, the magnum, plasma pistol. And then this is the Destiny machine gun. So uh, some really cool weapons from some video games there. And then here's a, a Halo battle scene done by the same builder. And a little bit more uh, video game type builds with some, some Destiny, some Halo 
Uh, and then this is actually Unity Temple. So this is a model of a Frank Lloyd Wright building that's uh, located in Oak Park, Illinois. This is a Unity Temple built for a Unitarian Universalist church. And so this uh, is a wonderful build. I myself have walked past it in Oak Park once or twice before, but uh, the build is interesting in the fact that uh, it uses only light bluish gray as the color of choice. And uh, the building itself in real life features many, many numerous colors. So uh, a really wonderful build and a, a really thoughtful architectural model. And uh, moving along here, we see uh, interesting rendering of a Legoland hotel. So this is almost like a recreation of a, a earlier 80s like Legoland hotel kind of town set. And uh, a really nice build. And I'm not sure what's going on there with the mouth, but uh, I don't know. Who knows? And uh, anyway, to the left here, we have some base plates with some Star Wars minifigures. And then there's the Lego Star Wars set uh, suspended above the minifigures. And... Uh, there's uh, another Lego base plate with some more Star Wars minifigures on it. So, very cool build. This is Outpost Tantiv by Kevin Anderson. So, wonderful build, Kevin. Coming along here, we have a Viking battle scene, and this is a build by Matt Gamper. Yeah, and this is uh, you know, really cool, kind of combining the medieval Vikings. Uh, got the, these nice river running through there, some cool bridges, uh, lots of great uh, foliage techniques, and then the the Vikings are just set up really, really nicely with the, the battle formations and things here. And then you got some of the classic Viking ships to the left here. So, uh, really, really great build there. Coming down here, you've got, uh, this is a St. Joseph, Michigan. Uh, so you've got like the, the Carnegie Library up there in St. Joseph. Uh, you've got, you know, some classic, uh, engine house and you know and the, these are all really just wonderful builds by jason spears and jason spears is a builder from the western michigan area and uh he, he's very very good at executing these uh nice little town builds with a lot of subtle detail and great color usage and all kinds of stuff like that mm -hmm. and then uh coming down here we've got uh some some cool stuff with the uh medieval and things like that with the guilds of historica but first we want to make sure we, we don't miss this build here this is a really interesting uh this is wipeout by uh cecily uh fritz vold i believe is how you say that name and uh kind of a, a race almost when you got kind of the announcing tower up there kind of a viewing tower and cecile is a builder from sweden i believe and okay. she's uh flown in for brick world and so this is a wonderful build by uh her so really, really uh, amazing stuff. And then coming along here, we have uh, some wonderful castle creations. And these are builds by Benjamin Hauger. And uh, this one uh, is called a Ye Slightly Newer Forge and Noah's Noria to uh, the left here. So wonderful, wonderful builds. Nice bases. I really appreciate that when the bases are so uh, artfully crafted. It just adds a lot to the creation. And then coming along here, we have a nice little castle tower and uh, some other wonderful castle builds. This is a very interesting technique used on the tower here. These are two-by-two two, uh, tiles, and they're sort of flexed out using uh, different Lego panel pieces to create a cylindrical effect. And I so think that, that works really well for the, these medieval towers. I always like it when I see that effect. I think it's, it's just a really nice kind of you know, nice, smooth look, but at the same time kind of run down and like looks like a, a tower type build. Certainly. If you've ever seen, there's a Lego book published by an author of the name of Sarah Herman, and uh, it features a build by Jordan Schwartz of Rapunzel's Tower, and uh, Jordan utilized a very similar technique in Dark Tan as well uh, to do so, uh, such a wonderful build. So continuing on down here, we have Desert King's Tournament. This is another build by Benjamin Hager. So a uh, wonderful build. That's like Arabian Nights kind of vibe going on here with the desert. You see, are those ostriches or emus? Emus? Ostrich? <laughs> Who knows? Either way, wonderful build. Wonderful, wonderful build. Coming along here, we have the Huntress Lodge, another build by ben Benjamin Hogger. Uh, lots and lots of builds by uh, Benjamin here, so a uh, very prolific and talented builder. And so this is all uh, part of uh, Eurobricks.com presents the Guilds of Historica. Nocturnus. So uh, I believe these are all builds affiliated with Eurobricks.com. Eurobricks.com being a Lego fan website that has a, a wonderful showing here at Brick World. So wonderful, wonderful stuff. And coming down, yet another build by Benjamin. Uh, this is the uh, Weavern Whelp Swamp. So that's really, really interesting, that lime green color being used as the swamp, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it makes a great swamp look when blended with like the browns and the the grays of the, the towers and castles there. Uh, did really really nice job with that and got some uh uh world war ii builds built by colin jenin uh we interviewed him about several of these builds that you might have seen on the the page in the past here so uh check those out if you haven't uh talented world war ii builder 
Uh, down here is a, a really neat, this is the USS North Carolina battleship built by Austin Pankey. And so the USS North Carolina is a uh, it's a decommissioned uh, World War II battleship, and it's uh, permanently moored uh, in uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. And uh, I myself have had the good fortune to be able to tour uh, the battleship uh, a couple of times, and uh, really very nice representation of the battleship. So it kind of uh, touches on a lot of the main components uh, in a very, very nice way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really captures, you know, all the, the main, you know, like you got the 16-inch the guns, the side, like 5-inch guns and things on the battleship really nicely. So uh, I've captured all the really great details, even the, the smaller, like, anti-aircraft uh, guns as well. And coming on down here, uh, some more cool builds from uh, Spencer Silby Once has again, a whole bunch the, here. The mirror technique. Mm -hmm. We've seen several mirrors this evening. Yeah, it seems like that's getting more popular this year at Brickworld. Is the, the whole mirror technique to see the bottom? I think it, it just adds a like unique look. It definitely makes it stand out if you're going along and seeing. Oh, you all of a sudden you can see the mirror in the bottom of the build. It's really neat. Coming along here, uh, some, yeah, really cool technic builds here. So some more of those boats we were talking about earlier. There's some mine storms. Mine storms there, and then uh, down here, this is uh, some stuff from China. So uh, all sorts of you got like a, a noodle house, uh, sort of a Chinatown, Chinatown, Chinatown gate going on mm -hmm. there, uh, like section of the the Great Wall of China. So cool stuff along there. Down here we've got some more uh, Technic. This is the the water strider. Uh, kind of some custom Technic builds they got going on here. Old tractor. Uh, here's a uh, T-34, 85 World War II tank. So that's actually a really, one of the cooler tank models I've seen here. Uh, Russian tank there. So uh, very impressive uh, Russian winter tank there. And so here we have a build by uh, Pascal Schmidt, and this is called Rapture. And uh, a lovely, lovely micro build. It has a sort of spacey kind of vibes and... Uh, sort of like uh, something sinister about it because it utilizes this sort of dark gray color scheme intermixed with other sort of earth tone colors. And uh, Pascal is a builder from, uh, I want to say Germany, uh, I believe, and Pascal is here at Brickworld uh, for the event. So as you can see, uh, lots of international builders here at Brickworld. Very, very fortunate to have such talented builders from abroad attending this event. Mm -hmm. And before we head down the other side of this aisle, I want to make sure we come back and hit a couple builds that are kind of on the back wall here. So uh, the first isn't an actual build. It's a more of a, I guess you could say, a collaborative in a sense. This is the, uh, I think, the, the Brickworld graffiti walls, I think what this is called. So they just kind of have a lot of play bricks set out, and they let the public and anybody who wants to can just come up and make whatever they want on the wall. So, you know, spell your name, uh, make, you know, your uh, logo, uh maybe uh, something from your favorite movie or TV show, whatever it might be, a little mosaic. Uh, I Heart Steampunk, somebody said. So, you know, all, all sorts of interesting things you can write on here. And then here we have the uh, first LEGO League logo, the first LEGO League being the uh, first LEGO League robotics um, sort of affiliation organization, all that kind of stuff. And uh, when we were at Brick Fair New England in Manchester, New Hampshire, we were fortunate enough to be able to uh, witness the uh, first LEGO League headquarters, world uh, headquarters. So awesome. Very cool. Yeah, very neat stuff there. So that's a more recent addition that they set up. Some cool stuff there. Uh, here is the... Uh, I believe this is a uh, blocks uh, Rivendell. So uh, some really, this is like awesome waterfalls they've got along here. This is done by Ben Pitchford. Uh, he did all sorts of cool rock work with the the water coming down. Some really cool kind of architecture type stuff as well. So uh, this is he does say there's a do downsized set which is gathering support on Lego ideas as well. So I'd encourage you to look that up and check it out. Uh, maybe vote for that on Lego Ideas. Now we'll come back down uh, the other the other side of this aisle that we were on earlier, and show you the rest of this here. Uh, starting off, uh, John Imp, uh, who has several several smaller builds along here. Uh, Lucy's Super Cycle Steampunk rebuild you know, from the Lego Movie. There, uh, get some mecha type builds, uh, little steampunk builds. And you've got uh, sort of a military type blend, uh, different different types of city buildings in this here. So big kind of city bank buildings, things like that. 
here is, uh, I believe this is a Brolug member that built this here. This is Kyle, Kyle from Bermuda. Some okay. wonderful creations by Kyle there. So yeah, that spaceship there, great job by Kyle, uh, one of the Brolug members. And then, moving on down here, Julian Singer, I think built several of these builds here. And then here we have some nice trees utilizing those alt bricks elements, which are so wonderful. Uh, different uh, fall type leaves. And then coming along, we have an uh, interesting Arctic Research Station mock back there. Very, very nice. And then uh, this looks like some kind of uh, future battle scene. And this is the Battle of Alaris Prime Clone Wars by Danny Derenzio. And so lots of green. It's very flat green. It's green. Might be a work in progress at the moment. There might be a work in progress uh, element to this build, yes, yes. And uh, coming along here, we have a very nice uh, kind of modern house here. And it's rendered out very lovely and uh, sits on a nice little base plate and everything. Uh, a wonderful build. Mm -hmm. It looks like, I'm assuming this might be the builder's own house, possibly. So they seem to have some really nice shots of it, photos to, to use as inspiration for the build. So very, very nice here. And then these are some very interesting kind of uh, flowery creations. And these utilize a new kind of curvy Lego element that appears in some of the newer uh, Lego... Um, I guess uh, elf sets, friend sets, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, and it's uh, just a wonderful piece to sort of create these kind of flower elements and uh, all kinds of cool stuff. So very nice utilization there of that new element. And then coming along, we have a nice uh, Rod Gen Hale farm, and this is by John Kalapiki, and we're probably butchering that name, but uh, you know, what are you going to do? I love this ship right here. If you can take a second to look at this, the uh, Conquistador ship here by the same builder we just mentioned uh, did an excellent job with the, the cannons on this and the sails. Just making that all from scratch. It's a, a really, really great ship. I really like that model. Thanks. And then coming along, we have some wonderful creations by uh, Timothy Liddy. And uh, Timothy is a very talented builder, very prolific, uh, many, many posts on Flickr. But these builds are fantastic in the fact that the color scheme is so monochromatic, save for the mechs themselves. And so what it really ends up doing is sort of emphasizing these mechs. And uh, the way that this is presented, there are these um, large kind of uh, figures sort of uh, in different like the poses. the Sentinel builds. The Sentinel, yes, yes. And uh, it's it sort of sits on the table in a very thoughtful way with lots of different elements kind of projecting outwards. And it looks just uh, like some kind of... Um, it could be like a bronze statue almost, is, is I guess the, the final word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and uh, Tim is a really talented builder. He always brings some, some really cool, you know, superhero stuff is what he's mostly known for. He's brought some really cool builds. And so coming along here, we have an uh, interesting uh, World War J build. So lots of different... It's these all are... the Jack Stone minifigs, so it's World War J, and so kind of a play on the World War Z uh, whole thing there with all the, the old Jack Stone minifigs. And so uh, Jack Stone minifigs, uh, if you're not aware, Jack Stone, kind of an ill-fated Lego line, didn't do so well. So needless to say, these Jack Stone minifigs are rather affordable on the aftermarket. So that is a, a prime candidate for just buying a ton of them and doing something introspective and postmoderny with them. So, lovely, lovely World War J build there. And then this is a model of a cathedral in Dresden uh, in uh, eastern Germany. Uh, this cathedral was destroyed in World War II, I believe, and rebuilt immediately afterward. And there's some wonderful larger-scale Lego models uh, of this church, but this is a wonderful, wonderful micro-scale build. Incredibly detailed, uh, you have to admit. And then to the left of that, we have the Santa Maria della Salute. Uh, Venice, and this is by Marcus Rollbuller, but uh, a very, very nice build. Uh, amazing articulation of those domes using uh, different curved elements. So, uh, really, really wonderful builds here by Marcus. And then coming along, we have uh, um, the another more, layout here. It's more uh, Euro bricks, a collaborative type layout here. The move around the builders here. You can see uh, people still hard at work on the builds uh, late into the night there and <laughs> not giving up on the build. So uh, very cool stuff there. And then here's the, the other side of the virtual lug display that we showed you earlier. Uh, you see some, some more of the mosaics, uh, some more of the, the different chips and stuff in that. I think Virtual Lug should come to be known as the lug of parts dumping because they do some of the most artful parts dumping, just sort of laying out lots of elements on a base plate to achieve like a water effect or another kind of effect. 
And uh, once again this year, their water is rendered out beautifully with these uh, lovely, lovely parts. And so coming along... They had the... What was it? Last year was the uh, the Odyssey that they did a lot of that with, with a the, the, lot of the water type technique like that that they did a really good job with. Yes, yes. And so once again, wonderful, wonderful water technique there. And so coming along here, we have another... Uh, this is the back side of the layout with the green tablecloths over it. Um, so who knows what happened, but they just don't do... They don't... It's not cool anymore to let it... I just... They put tablecloths over it, so... Oh, well. Anyway, here's a wonderful build by Peter Strait. These, on the other hand, are very cool. These buildings here are really unique. I, I love this one with the different angles, the, uh, you know, kind of going diagonally and things. Uh, definitely, you know, not your average kind of skyscraper-type build. And he's got some, some really cool colors in there as well with the black and the darker blues and then the, the orange, neon orange type. So... Uh, really awesome stuff there. It's the it's the Spy Spire, so it's kind of going along with the new Agents 2.0 theme he built that with. And then these are some some older kind of brick uh, buildings as well, all custom buildings. And really good job with that. And then coming along here, we have uh, some wonderful. This is a Ariel Arena, so just a wonderfully rendered out, fantastical arena with lots of interesting colors. Mm -hmm. And then. Starting down this aisle here, we've got some, some really cool stuff. We'll show you the, the front to begin with. Uh, I believe this is kind of a, a small train layout done by Andrew Beckett. He's got kind of the city park going through here, a train, and uh, Gotham police station little build, all sorts of cool little things that you can see here. And then so start moving down the aisle here, uh, side of the train layout. Uh, this is... A uh, series of builds. I don't think these are all done by the same builder, but you can see they're somewhat connected. They have kind of these round uh, pieces that they kind of, you know, hop from one build to the next. So uh, you've got this is alternate human vampire werewolf timelines, is what the card says here. So depending on what timeline you follow, uh, there are different ones you can see in different historical builds that kind of follow each other. So you got Prohibition back here, uh, done by Kevin Wagner. Then uh, Gary Conley did the Rio Brico, kind of a western town, uh, Fort Rio Brico, all sorts of things you would expect in western town. Then you go to the, the Civil War scene, so uh, kind of somewhat moving in order there, but then we start to move back in time to the Colonial Farmstead, and uh, then back to the uh, Huron Village, Indian Village there. So then a uh, 17th century Mexican town, uh, looks like might be work in progress maybe or somewhat of an abandoned town at the moment still some cool stuff there and, and then we have an aztec pyramid here mm -hmm. aztec pyramids you've got the aztecs uh, up there performing a ritual doing some stuff on top of the pyramid keep moving down here skull island uh by andrew beckett a uh, cool little fort kind of the the waterfall coming out of the skull there really interesting little build and then down here, another historical, uh, the Musketeers defend the king. So you get kind of the fountain there, uh, Musketeers helping defend the, the throne there. This is a cool little Asian-type uh, build here. I, I love the, like, dragon's head at the door. The roof's uh, done very nicely, so really well put together build. As we make our way further down this side, uh, these towers are really interesting because you can, they're all on wheels, and then they're also at kind of odd angles that they were built, so uh, you'll see some some really interesting techniques used in these towers as well. And then coming over here, there's a wonderful Mtron layout. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful Mtron layout. And so Mtron's an old Lego space theme, and uh, <laughs> this is just like a massive installation of different Mtron inspired mocks. So uh, I guess Mtron, the colors, right? Trans neon, and then red and black, and different shades of gray, and a little bit of white intermixed in there, but overall, a wonderful, wonderful build. And then coming along again, we have the Iowa Lego Users Group, and it appears that these are some builds from uh, people from Iowa and the Iowa Lego Users Group. And here's a football field. This is built by Reese Richer. And so you can see it's uh, not really a football field in the sense of uh, human athletes, but it appears that there are 
um, clones versus droids in there, so uh, you might be a little bit uh, different type of uh, football field than you might be used to. Some nice builds here by Houston Coley, uh, lots of lots of different builds, interesting group build there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then moving along here, we have some uh, wonderful builds here on the Penlock layout. And yeah, this is Penlina. They combine with more with another. Is it the Texas Brick Railroad? Group? Yes, Texas Brick Railroad, Tony Savin Company, uh, and uh, they sort of put together this massive town layout here at Brick World. And so right now we're looking at, uh, I believe this is the Penlug portion, and this is the Red Line train station project uh, by Kale Leaphart. And what really uh, makes this project amazing to me is, uh, I would say maybe two things really tickle me pink: uh, the fact that this road is at an angle, and he's able to sort of allow the the angled road to meet a uh, normal leg go grid pattern at uh, angles so easily and so here you can see that's done by using these angle plates and then here he's doing uh, some interesting snot work to sort of accomplish the same thing but in the in both cases a uh, really really nice uh, execution of that uh, snotted road into an angle at a odd angle and uh, just all kinds of wonderful stuff and then uh, to kind of uh, sort of um, springboard off of that this building here utilizes a really wonderful uh, technique to accomplish the uh, I guess that would be called just like a, a wood siding effect almost. But these are uh, like one by two or different widths of panel piece. And this is the the one by uh, one width or the one stud width uh, panel that's about one stud tall. And uh, he's done this by clipping them in to uh, internal structure. And uh, when you do that and you layer them on top of each other, it has the effect of looking like um, actual wood siding. Very, very cool. And then moving along here, we see the Penlug uh, train layout, uh, their train layout yard as it were. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. And then coming along down a little bit further, we see uh, a nice little, uh, this is like a coaling tower, so putting coal back into the trains of the layout. Uh, very, very nice stuff there. And then here we have a new, this is a Penlug Roundhouse, and so this is a project that was led by Kale Leaphart, and uh, it appears that uh, Nate Brill and Glenn Holland have sort of helped him out, but uh, what makes this bill just absolutely wonderful, uh, really too many things to actually name, uh, just uh, absolutely everything about this uh, build is just uh, fantastic. There is a, a lot of great detail in here, you know, the, the way he, he built the building, that's all, uh, you know, like w small plates stacked on top of each other to make that the, the walls of the building, he did a great job with the roof with kind of those grill pieces on top and then just the, the details inside, you know, all sorts of fun little details inside there as well, the crates and everything, uh, just like you would expect a little train depot type uh, to look like. So some really great stuff he did there with that building, all, everyone who helped him with that did a great job. And so this is where the Penlug layout, it appears that the Penlug layout meets the Texas Brick Railroad layout. And so here we see some wonderful trees by Anthony Sava. And so he, Anthony Sava is uh, rather prolific with building some wonderful, wonderful trees. And now we're going to move over to... Before we finish out the, the Penlug Texas Brick Railroad area, we want to make sure we don't miss this uh, Pirates layout over here. So this is kind of the, the plexiglass uh, Pirates layout that uh, they update and have here every year. So uh, you've got kind of the pirate flag over there and then come around with the different islands, some islanders, uh, volcano. Uh, coming along to this side here, quick, you got kind of the little fort, some imperial troops, and some more islanders. And then here's some, some real life buildings. So this is the, the uh, Dismet Hall in Gonzaga University in Spokane, Washington. Uh, you've got a little tiny uh, nickel mill lane, Franklin, Tennessee, then the uh, Dayton, Ohio, University of Dayton there, and the Lee Barracks in uh, Military Academy at West Point. So Some Wonderful builds by Rafe Donahue, and Rafe puts a lot of effort into sort of planning these buildings out beforehand and sort of uh, taking the time to try and render out uh, everything uh, architecturally very, very well. And coming along here, we have a nice little monorail uh, layout with uh, some interesting trains kind of going around. And uh, this is a lot of stuff built by Brad. Built by Brad. Built by Brad. 
and set design and instructions from Brick Journal issue 7. So a lot of these are built and based upon different uh, LEGO set instructions that you can find in the community. So you can see here on the bottom he sort of credited all of his designs to different Brick Journal uh, inspiration stuff and Brick.Tastic or Bricktastic, LGage.com. LGage, yeah. Lots of cool stuff there. So very nice to credit the, the stuff that you were inspired by. While we're back here we should mention real quick this is kind of over to this side is in the, in the back corner is the play area so when the public's here they just have tons and tons of play bricks set out here so that kids can have you know a good time actually you know using the bricks to build things and not just looking at stuff while they're here yep yep and then coming along coming along we have um i guess more of the Texas brick railroad slash pen luck layout to look at back to anthony sav's wonderful trees here and then uh anthony here has a lovely little engine shed uh, mock, very very nice there by Anthony, and then here we see some trains, uh, wonderful steam engines, and uh, here is a little um, kind of railroad station mock that was built by Anthony. Uh, once again, wonderful, wonderful creations. And then uh, moving along a little bit more, I like the bridge here. The kind of gaps, you know, I don't yeah. where the the. the two tables stop and it kind of gaps that in between there is really nice and then one of the best things about this bridge uh is uh, that it's using the me models rail which is a uh, fan produced uh lego nine volt track compatible elements i guess would be the best way to say it but uh, what makes these great is that they don't need to be clicked in from uh like horizontally they can just be dropped in because they don't have any um sort of pins or uh friction elements holding them in place so this bridge can easily be lifted up and then lift it back down and um, you don't have to really worry about too much so very nice utilization of a third party Lego fan created uh, uh, element uh, to build a cool mock and then coming along here we have a nice little airfield you can see that it's indicated by the bright light green versus the normal green so a uh, nice little thoughtful build there coming along a little bit more we have a nice little train station there off in the distance and uh, it has some uh, wonderful wonderful snot work on it uh, we've seen this build at some other different conventions and uh, it really just uh, it never gets old it is the, all of the buildings on the uh, pen look layout are of uh, just amazing quality thought and uh, just uh, overall awesomeness and then coming along here, we have more of the Penlug, like, downtown uh, street scene, as it were. And uh, Penlug recently has been adding some larger buildings to their layout. And the lighting here in these buildings is really cool, too. You see some of the, you know, changing colors and stuff in their skyscrapers. just makes it that much cooler. Sure, sure. And the, one of the best things is this new... Uh, train uh, like kind of a trolley track running down the center of the track now it's uh, tiled out with dark red so very very cool there and then coming along here we're going to sort of pan back down to this layout over here with some lovely sports teams logos and uh, an Oscar statue how about that Oscar statue let's check that out very nice Oscar statue so if you watch the Oscars this year uh, you'll remember that uh, Nathan Sawaya built a Lego Oscar sort of model and uh, it was uh, sort of shared around social media went very viral and uh, some Lego builders, I would assume that this was inspired by that uh, and uh, what can you say, very very nice coming down here we have uh, Green Bay Packers logo and uh, I believe that would be the New England Patriots and some other stuff Seahawks, awesome awesome and then uh, this is a really nice sort of uh, building complex by Billy Moore so, uh, wonderful, wonderful build. And then coming along here more, we have the CenturyLink field. And so this is just a nice little sports stadium. And obviously it's something that maybe wasn't built by, uh, you know, a grown adult uh, with a massive collection. But it really uh, represents a valiant effort by what appears to be a younger uh, fan of LEGO. Yeah, and this, this was uh, quite a young fan that we actually talked to him earlier. She had to interview him, and uh, he did a great job with this. And this is the, actually the Seattle Seahawks uh, CenturyLink Field Stadium there. So uh, great, great job there. I want to come down and show you this side of the table real quick before I move on. This is uh, Davenport Builds, uh, which I think might be like a, a church group type of thing. Uh, they've got some... Some pretty cool little builds along here. You got some scenes from the Big Bang Theory, uh, all sorts of interesting builds like that. And then this is a really nice model of uh, 801 Grand Avenue in Des Moines, Iowa by Chris Hedinger. So just a wonderful little micro scale build there. And then moving along here, we have a wonderful uh, sort of castle. Layout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and you'll you'll notice this castle layout might look familiar. 
this has been here uh, for several years, and this builder keeps adding on, you know, taking stuff off, adding some cool new things, depending on how much space he has and all of that. So, uh, really cool display here with the tents and, you know, the, the old medieval buildings. He's always got some, some interesting uh, moat parts with the, the castle walls kind of uh, meeting up there with the moats and the, the different vineyards and fields out here with the villages. It's a great job with that. And then coming along here, we go back to this uh, sort of travel through time layout with uh, the different uh, dark tan um, round elements indicating the time passing through. Mm -hmm. So here's a nice little beach scene with some interesting brick trees. Very nice brick trees. Uh, Star Wars, is, I think it's like the Battle of Hoth, uh, winter scene here, so it's a popular you see see this it's uh some very nice conventions a lot uh, being used on the white tablecloth mm -hmm. so kind of giving them the winter effect there here's uh the remixel bakery so taking all sorts of mixel parts mixel and, sets and stuff like that mm -hmm. and sort of putting the mixel sets on different cloth elements so this is a, a really awesome build here that i thought was a really unique idea that starts from, from the left here and it's a city through time so at the, the very left there, it's kind of the, the very old, just kind of small fishing village. Then as you move here, it gets to kind of the, the medieval uh, times. Uh, you got the kind of a castle type build going on. Then it gets to like modern day. So you can see the, the city streets and things. Then the, the all the way right one is like the futuristic, uh, almost a space build there. It's really interesting. He kind of keeps with the, the same type of build with the water kind of bay almost going, but it's all the way through time there. So a uh, really, really neat idea there. Philip Strotzma, I believe is uh, how that name is pronounced. So really great idea. Another Lego maxi fig creation. Mm -hmm. So cool. Here's a, uh, this is Wis Lug, which is Wisconsin Lug. So there's a micro scale Wisconsin Capitol building. Uh, cool stuff. Some cool this is stuff like there. like a awesome glorified business card holder mosaic <laughs> creation thing advertising Wistlug. And they have some nice business card laid out there. Here's a, looks like a, a Doctor Who Dalek built out of Lego. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And here in the corner to the left here, we see a lovely maxi sized like Lego house creation. And so this is uh, a build that was inspired. It does look like something from New Orleans, and it, in fact it is Katrina Cottage inspired Wisconsin home. It looks like a New Orleans inspired house and there's a lot of backstory here. And it I'm looks like it I'm says like... that uh, a little yellow cottage with a tin roof uh, hit at the recent International Builders show, maybe the future of emergency housing. So yeah, I think it was like a FEMA type emergency uh, inspired uh, building here. So yeah, it's a r really interesting kind of floor layout, some, some nice uh, brick work there. Keep coming along here. Uh, I've got some some kind of space type stuff here. Really cool kind of spaceships. Large spaceship, very nice large spaceship. And then coming on down, we have a very nice uh, train layout. And uh, this is just a wonderful train layout because it has some very thoughtful track work sort of done. And uh, some really, I, I, these are some custom uh, sort of Lego crossing elements here. We can see this angle crossing. If you have never seen that before, there's a good reason. That uh, is a completely custom element. So, and one of the other great things about this train layout is these handles. Um, so the whole thing is kind of modular in all kinds of cool ways and uh, sort of able to drag and drop like a normal train layout, uh, HO scale or what have you. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful build here. That's yeah, coming around really here. cool stuff. And then we start on the, the Northern Illinois Lego Train Club, which if you've watched our tours before, they always have an incredible showing at these events. Uh, with this being, you know, Brick World Chicago, they're the kind of more local lug. Uh, they do some, some really awesome stuff here every year. Uh, a lot of this beginning part here is by Matt Delanois, uh, who you might be familiar with. We've interviewed him several times in different videos over the years. Uh, he's got his big uh, Simpsons area here. Uh, Springfield, USA, and then he's got uh, some Nintendo type builds here. Uh, some some really cool stuff there. And then coming down here, we've got this is the Imperial Fort coin pusher uh, brick booty. So uh, it's like a you ever seen in like an arcade a game where you put a coin in and you try to push more coins off. Uh, it's like that only with Lego bricks. So you drop in a brick and you try to push more uh, bricks off with each time. So really cool uh, moving game there. Down here uh, you get some, some sort of Technic type ship stuff. Here's the 
uh, throughway toll uh, 10 cents. So looks like there's a kind of a posse heading to the toll there. A little train yard area here. So a lot of the the uh, this is the train Northern Illinois Lego train clubs. So you're going to have a variety of train types here. And then here you can look all the way down the road to the other side of the exhibit, which is really cool. They've got that whole nice, uh, really nice road with even the, the yellow double lines and everything built in there. This is kind of the city portion of it with massive skyscrapers here. You can see all the way up there to the the top of the skyscrapers. Some some great window work. Uh, some of these are uh, several of these are famous uh, Chicago buildings. So uh, really really cool, interesting buildings here. We continue down. I uh, will show a little bit of the end cap here. Uh, there appears to be a, a U-boat in the water here, so you uh, might want to watch out for that for the people in the city. And some, some cool skyscrapers here as well. As we move on down this direction, uh, some more builds by Matt Delanois. Uh, his Arrested Development layout that he's, I think, shown here a few times before. Then uh, some, some other smaller builds by a variety of uh, young builders here. This is a really neat little build right here that's uh, Aaron uh, Fiscum, I believe is uh, the builder's name. It's a Star Wars UCS land speeder. Uh, this is, project is actually on LEGO Ideas, so uh, if you're interested in supporting this, I encourage you to check that out. It's a super detailed, really well put together uh, land speeder that uh, just instantly recognizable from Star Wars. Then here's a uh, battle at Avengers Tower. So the with the new Avengers movie, there's been some a lot of Avengers mocks here that look really nice. And you keep coming down here. This is uh, kind of Gotham type related builds. Uh, you got Gotham City. You've got uh, Batman and Joker sea cows. So the builder took the this metal beard sea cow sets and made a Batman themed sea cow and a Joker themed sea cow. It's got a uh, Batman mosaic there. And then there's a bat train. Here's the Gotham uh, word spelled out with like the, the skyline as well. So it's really cool. It's a little Lego ship. Here's uh, British troops attack Gold Beach. So it's kind of some World War II. Uh, Pickett's Charge, Gettysburg, famous Gettysburg uh, battle there. Colonial Farm, so historical build there. It's a little bit covered up still, so the builder isn't showing that yet. Uh, this is another another build that the the builder is still hard at work here late into the night working on uh, Hope Castle. Uh, Reed Yeager, uh, if you want to, what what are you working on right now? I am actually I built a bunch of capes this year. I went with custom capes. I did a class yesterday, a workshop. Um, I'm actually working on actually getting all the capes that I actually built since the last time this was on display. I'm getting all the capes put on the on the guys. I have 250 Chima ice bears that are actually guarding this castle. And so I'm actually putting capes on all these guys. Hopefully soon because I have a lot to work to do tomorrow. So, But yeah, so it's just kind of things where I mean I just I made custom capes. They look pretty snazzy and so I'm just equipping those guys. Okay, so. very nice. Uh, thanks for telling us about that. Good, good luck with finishing those up. Hope that finishes for you soon. Thanks, Joshua. Mm -hmm. And then continuing on down here, we've got some uh, start of the GBC. Yes, so if you've seen our GBC videos, Tom Atkinson uh, always takes us through at each convention, uh, showing us the really cool GBCs. This one here is, I think, the biggest one I've ever seen at a convention. They have a massive display this year. All sorts of incredible modules here. Uh, none of it's running right now, but we will definitely try to get a video of the whole thing running uh, when during the public time sometime when, when all the, the balls are going through it. Here's a lovely over like a kind of an arching build by uh, Thomas Mueller, mm -hmm. a lovely uh, German builder by way of Southern California, and he built some crazy amazing GVC modules. Yep, very nice. And then you've got like a Ferris wheel type build, so all sorts. Here's a, a monorail track type uh, transport build. Coming along here, this is the, the end cap of keep following the GBC here. Some of these modules you might recognize from past GBC videos we've done. Uh, to, to our left, we'll mention real quick uh, the Legoland Discovery Center. So they had a booth uh, here last year, I think for the first time, and they have it back again this year. Uh, there's some cool, uh, they usually bring some cool like Discovery Center models like these to the left here. Here's a Harry Potter model, uh, some, some larger scale models from the Discovery Center. They'll usually have a play area. 
things of that nature for the kids to do. So that's the, the local Chicago Legoland Discovery Center has a booth here, they, and then they're also selling products as well. We'll come back over to the GBC now, continue down the, the line of modules here. All sorts of interesting colors in here. I, everyone is designed a little bit different. It's always really cool when this thing's running to see how it all runs together. Uh, hopefully it's running properly and uh, they can get it all to work at once. So some really cool modules there. On our left here is all the several vendors. They kind of line each sidewall at the convention here. So, and what's new this year, and this might be a new innovation by Brian to sort of uh, maximize the amount of square footage that vendors can occupy, there's like these kind of divots that go in. So before, uh, you would kind of have like a vendor um, layout that looked more linear, right? You just have tables against a wall. But now, you have these kind of corner things, so it'll kind of come in at a corner, and it creates this little kind of area here for uh, the public to sort of gather and purchase uh, stuff from the vendors. So um, very cool that, uh, that this is like a new uh, layout innovation, and I'm sure that this has been done at other conventions in the past, but this is somewhat of a brick world first, and hopefully it will uh, go over well uh, when the public comes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So uh, hopefully get as you know, much public in there buying from the vendors as possible. Here is the uh, Minicon. So you might have seen this in some past tours at Brick Fair and other conventions we've done. Uh, you can see like the Mini GBC there, uh, all sorts of, of Mini builds uh, down through the, the rest of the way here. So this is just a, a Mini version of Brick World Chicago of the convention here. Uh, keep coming down here. Here's a really cool uh, micro version of Jameson's Frank Lloyd Wright House that we showed you earlier. So in the corner there, great job with that. Here is uh, Derek Allman, uh, built several kind of space, uh, the Red Jacket, Icy uh, Interceptor, kind of really cool spaceship type builds here. Some Blacktron stuff there as well. Uh, here is the, the end of that Gotham display we showed you some of earlier. This is uh, Arkham Asylum, really great rock work there and uh, work on the building. And then space, space build, space build. Mm -hmm. Some classic space, uh, monorail type stuff here. Here's uh, Back to the Future, like we said, that's Bricks of the Future is the, the theme this year. So this is kind of one of the iconic scenes. Uh, Hill Valley, where they, uh, they've got the, the town hall type building and all of that, clock tower. Really, really cool stuff there. Keep coming around here. Here's the, the wonderful Victor Fernandez Where? is uh, here as usual Eclipse with Eclipse oh, Graphics. Oh, hey. <laughs> so Victor, Victor, you've uh, been to many Brick Worlds. How's this one looking thus far? Awesome. Yeah. Very dense. Very dense. With awesome builds. Now there's some new layout innovations this year. Uh, I was uh, pointing out earlier uh, some of the vendor layouts. It's like there's these divots now, more divots. Uh, is that new this year, Victor? These kind of divots that go in like this? I call them alleyways. Alleyways. Yes. 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 That's, where, that's where the shady deals go down. <laughs> Do you think I didn't say nothing. I mean, that's not official. We're not on the record, right? <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Do you think the alleyway will be a benefit to the uh, LEGO convention going public's experience? Or do you think it'll be a track? And do, or do you think you don't know? I don't know. I think everybody just stay in my booth. That's, you know. So just they, go to Eclipse Graphics and yeah, don't there patronize you go. any I, other I, yeah. vendors. Yes, yes. I didn't say all that. You oh, also no, have Clone no, Army Customs. And buy, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> And Clone Army Customs. Very nice, Victor. Very nice. You can edit some of that out. <laughs> Thank you for stopping by. <laughs> so here's uh, some more of the Northern Illinois Lego Train Club booth that we showed you earlier. This is the, the other side here. Uh, really cool. you got the, the train track that runs all along and uh, some, of, some of their buildings. Here's the, the road I showed you earlier that runs all the way through their display. They also have, uh, I think, similar to what Penlug had with the, the bridge that gaps the two tables, so that's cool there. And then uh, kind of the train yard here with all the, all the different sorts of trains they have and the, and the track. Nice little windmill there. Mm -hmm. Another uh, kind of a concert scene, stage scene, concert scene, stage. And, yeah, several, several big windmills. Lots uh, of wonderful town buildings here. Mm -hmm. Really cool stuff. Uh, some more trains. That's a kind of raised track up here that looks really cool. Great job with that. And then I think that about finishes up for the Northern Illinois Club. We've got uh, 
a little bit of this, this train uh, display that we mentioned and, earlier. And here we can take a moment to appreciate the, the Duplo understructure. So when you're building a layout like this, you need to uh, kind of create a lot of terrain really quickly. Uh, a wonderful technique is to sort of incorporate some Duplo bricks, and that way you can kind of gain a lot of height, a lot of space uh, with a relatively lightweight and uh, inexpensive uh, Lego port parts. Mm -hmm. So uh, and we're going to kind of go around. And we're, we're getting close to finishing up here, so we've taken you through almost the whole thing. Uh, there's still some, some builds we want, don't want to miss here. This is Brick City, Paul Wellington, uh, excellent micro uh, city builder here. Just got the, the micro, you know, the river, the bridges, all sorts of incredible buildings he does. Uh, the way he just fits this in is is amazing. So, and a really interesting innovation in uh, interesting innovation in car technique uh, here. It, it appears that he's uh, almost uh, using. They look like they're like whoa, uh, um, one by two uh, tiles, and the tiles are sort of embedded into the road, and it allows them to uh, kind of project them out at different intervals to kind of represent different cars. So a really innovative uh, sort of technique there used to uh, create the uh, effect of uh, a car. But this is just a wonderful, wonderful micro scale uh, layout. And next to that, we've got the Brickology display. So uh, Beth Weiss uh, does a great job with this every year. She usually puts up. You know, one of these massive kind of oval type builds. Uh, so many uh, bricks in those things. It's amazing. She does really interesting builds every year with those. So uh, that's really neat stuff there. Lots of and amazing then, geometric work, yes. Uh, there's a couple things we want to show you. A couple last tables here before we end. Just to, to try to fit as much in as possible. We, we try not to miss people. Uh, do our best. So here is the uh, Dirty Buildster. And... Matthew, if you want to talk a little bit about what Dirty Buildster is for people who might not be familiar with it. Yeah, so Dirty Buildster is uh, just like it's like a Lego kind of event uh, held at conventions. And people will uh, sort of gather around the assortment of parts and uh, either build freely or build to some kind of uh, prompt. And uh, the builds are then judged afterwards. So very cool that uh, they just kind of... Uh, Exhibit a lot of cool creativity with a limited parts palette. And uh, I believe next uh, we have way, way down at the, the far end here, the final table we don't want to miss because there are s some cool builds there. Uh, yeah, so we wanna, we wanna, we're going to walk all the way across the, the front of the <laughs> convention hall here and uh, make sure we don't miss that. You know, the action shots, walking backwards here, trying to hit the poster. So we can stop real quick to show you to the left here a Lego Brickumentary. They're actually showing it at Brickworld this year. So it uh, should be really cool. That's released into theaters July 31st, but we're getting a sneak peek at it. Brickworld this year, so you see the giant poster there. And then coming back around this direction, coming up, watch the, the gates there. No, no, no one tripping or anything as we move across the front of the convention. So here we come to the, the final display here. And some, some cool little train type layouts. And then this is just a wonderful uh, layout because there's a lot of interesting creations on it. It was done by a, a young fan uh, who we've, we've actually had the chance to interview in past years. And uh, he, does, he does some really cool stuff with his trains. He has the, the buildings all laid out here. It's always cool to see that. Uh, Connor Olson is his name. Uh, one of the more interesting things he does is actually this uh, shunting puzzle. So that's uh, moving the trains around. It starts starts in a certain position, and you have to move them uh, using the, the different track positions to get them moved into a different order. So it's a really fun little game he sets up, and you can time yourself and kind of see how fast you can do it. It's like a Jenga puzzle of trains or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he does a great job with that. So I think that pretty much finishes it out for us, if I'm I think not mistaken. That, that might yeah. may or may not be the whole <laughs> expo hall, and of course we probably mispronounced a lot of names <laughs> and missed a lot of creations and uh, mis mis uh, misinterpreted a lot of creations and said that they were the wrong thing. But uh, we kind of covered everything. We tried to sort of give you a little bit of a taste of Brick World here mm -hmm. in Chicago, and uh, we hope you enjoyed the tour. Yeah, we try our best to hit every creation every year. It's 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 not possible that every single little tiny one. But we always do our best, so uh, we hope we covered uh, your creation <laughs> if you're watching the video and you were able to see it uh, from Brickworld this year. So yeah, thanks for watching everybody. We appreciate it.